Welcome to the Flawed, Foolish and Fantastic Podcast. Um, we are here for an episode of a podcast known as Flawed, Foolish and Fantastic. And today we have our guest, the esteemed Pai Kamarup Singh, who I've known for many, many years. And if it wasn't for Pai Kamarup Singh, I wouldn't be here today doing the work I'm doing. Uh, and I, I can go through that another time and I'll thank you again and again and I'll do that to this. But flawed, foolish and fantastic. I'm flawed and foolish, so is Michael Singh. So this is us and you are our fantastic. We are, our guests are fantastic <laughs> because what you're going to do is you're going to bring, you're going to shed a light on who you are and you personally might not realise how important you are to other people and how important you will be in the future based on what they hear from what you say. Um, and that's why I wanted to come here and just shed a light upon you. So, by self, first of all, why would you call Thank you, 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 thank you very much for allowing us to come down here and, and setting up camp in your house. And I apologise, or you know, you haven't taken time out from other things. Um, but basically, I just wanted to do a talk on yourself. If you're happy with that, thing. Sure, I'd so, love to. No, that's great. So, right for those people who don't know you, tell us who is Governor Singh. Well, firstly, myself and yourself, we went to uh, university together back in 97, 98, 99, mm-hmm. and we were friends, and uh, yeah, we did a lot of sanghas there, and that was back in the day of Salvo, uh, com. Yeah. this epic, uh, uh, groundbreaking uh, website, it's avant-garde, really, in the, in the Sikhi world, about you know, the type of information that was being used there. Uh, the historical sources, uh, the discussion of the Sampradha, discussion of what was controversial at that time, uh, out in the open. So, yeah, we were kind, we kind of met in that in on that scene. Yeah. But about myself, before that we met, I was born here in Northampton, okay. and obviously born to Punjabi Sikh uh, parents. And one of my biggest influences was my grandmother. Mm. And she was a student of uh, Baba Nan Singh, Baba Isha Singh Ji, who followed him, the other Baba Isha Singh uh, of the same name, and uh, Baba Mia Singh, Siar Ali. Yeah. And so when I was younger, you know, some of my memories going to the dance by uh, the Buddha Mashi Nanakar in Coventry, Hanji Hanji, seeing Baba Ji, Mahapur coming around, or Kipani coming around. She was very, she believed a lot in Gurbani. She had total faith was in Gurbani. She wasn't into any superstitions. And doing her mala every day, doing Simran, listening to Sukhmi Saab, Asadiwa, Nithanim. So we were brought around, brought up in that ambience and obviously respect for Mahapur. And my own family background is that my dad's ancestors came from Afghanistan. Okay. And they came to a Namashed area. And one of my pradadde, like great grandfathers, he had two wives. And they both went into different areas. Okay. And uh, where one wife settled, our family came from. Okay. And. Uh, and so, on my dad's side, a lot of the Singhs were Nam Thadi. Okay, yeah, yeah. And my dad's great grandfather, he died when he was quite old. He knew a lot of Jidan Gurbani off by heart. He was Nam Thadi, he couldn't read or write, but he memorized it all. Yes. And he'd do give them by like, you know, banging his gut on like a pot or something yes. and singing along to it. And he was very Jidan into sword and he'd never take like driving a car walk places yeah. like Walter and Amtho Saab. <clears throat> so I never met him but my sisters met him when they went to India in 1986. Okay. So you know these kind of when you hear about someone like that who's completely different to the norm yeah. when they he'd live, in, live on the cool the little hutti to keep his sword do his shanan mm. do his bath and live a very very long life like I'm talking over 110 oh. and uh, yeah so you know I'd hear about these kind of people and my mum's um Mother was a student of Baba Hanam in Rampur Kere Yeah, yeah. And I've done the Sangha there with uh, Baba Ji at the moment. Baba Seva Singh. Hanji Baba Seva Singh Ji. I never met Baba Hanam Singh. My mum, my was also a student of Baba Hanam Singh Ji. Okay. And yeah, so they're, you know, this kind of hearing about these 
great Marvel with people who are immersed in Nam. And yeah, through my when I was younger, obviously going to school, you get out, outside influences, but they didn't they didn't shake me too much. If yeah. I'm honest with you, I was really quite straightforward. Go to school, come home, yeah. play a few computer games, meet my friends. I didn't really do anything too crazy or wild, huh? Yeah. But by the time I was get came to about fourteen, fifteen, I asked questions. What's this gear she found? Mm. What is it? And my BB, obviously in her worldview, which is you know pure Punjabi, also Anubhara, you know, completely illiterate, just about sign her signature. Mm. And she tried her best to explain, but I didn't understand. Yeah. And she taught me more mantra and Waheguru and doing Waheguru on the breaths mm. and, you know, all types of different ways of even doing it. And she explained to me Shavads because she'd remember it from Katha. Yes. Uh, sometimes when somebody's illiterate, they remember much more than somebody's literate. Yeah, when I'm using it. So you know, all of it. Exactly, exactly. If you try to ask me that 24 body in front of I can't do it. Andy, Andy. And, you know, she would know, like, the art as well, yeah. what it means. And so then I'd uh, sit in this, she actually passed away in this room. Right. And so, you know, I'd sit with her and uh, try to understand the mystical. And I was neither a believer and I was neither a disbeliever. I just didn't have a, have a, a, a position. But when I came to 14, 15, you know, that's time in your life when you're trying to find yourself mm. as a as a very young man. Yeah. I was like, what's the point of this? Like, I look different. What's the advantage of it? And I wasn't really material, materialistic. I was just very practical. Yeah. And for me, it made no practical sense. Yeah. And that's how I kind of, <laughs> I kind of like told myself it was worthless and yeah. I was better to cut my hair. Yeah. And so then I said to my BB, I said, uh, and I, I debated it for time. She goes, man, he didn't belong her. Yeah. And I said, no, you know, I don't see the point of it. She said, and she's heading back Shaheeds and this and that. I said, well, I don't own anything. Yeah. It's not that I made them do what they did for me. Yeah. I'm just trying to get by here. And I'm called a Paki when I go out on the streets. Exactly, yeah. And Iraqi bastard. You know, anytime if there's a war here, you're an Afghan, then you become an Iraqi. Yeah. But people don't know what you are. And they treat you in different ways. And we had a lot of bullying in school, mm. uh, me and my sisters, and I think I received the most of it because I was the youngest. And so this is the NF days, you know, yeah. getting my jewel out, pulled out, people threatening me with knives. This is when I'm walking to school. Mm. And so even there was a stage like walking, going to school, I just didn't want to. Yeah. And my baby would just sign me off true. He would just sign, sign it. Uh, he can't come in, he's sick. And I'd have months and months of like, I'm like, not even going to school. Yeah, that's, you know, that's understandable because during those days you would have, I'm guessing the population yeah. of either good Sikhs or Indians would have been so little so little yeah. so little so I didn't want to go anywhere and I just yeah. preferred to be at home so I <clears> used to be truant a lot yeah. but somehow I managed to get everything done and learn and pass my exams and stuff so that's what I was really born into and then you know and there was a lot of fun. Family moments were really good. My mum and dad, her sisters, I had really good friends. I had a really good childhood. Yeah. Uh, a very special, magical one. And by the time I was 15 and contemplating cutting my gears, I was already reading a lot of books on Sikhi. Okay. And I was, I'd say, quite a bit of a geek. I was into computer games and reading. And that was it. I wasn't really, I did sports of cricket, badminton, but I preferred the computer, some programming. And uh, the the um, uh, yes. Yeah, so, sorry, you you were yeah. just saying about your your childhood, especially with going to school. Um, yeah. You know, you were saying obviously the difficulties with going. Yeah, it didn't. I can't say any. Point, it made me fearful. I yeah. wasn't afraid, even when people pulling knives out on me, threatening me. I, I can't say I was really afraid. Like yeah. it really affected me in that way. It just made me dismayed. Yeah. And that was actually more dangerous because I carried that for a long time. Yeah. It just made me dismayed. Like, why are we living here for? What's the point? You know. Yeah. Like, you know, we're always going to be bloody packies in this place. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Of course it is. And then, and it made me like so not <clears throat> as motivated as I could be. And, you know, my mum taught me uh, Punjabi. She made a big effort. I wasn't really interested, to be honest. And, but she didn't force it. But but up here, yeah. And I managed to learn Guru Mukhi, Akkad and everything, which I'm thankful to her. Otherwise, all of this work here, yeah. none of it would have been possible. 
And so I used to mess around in Punjabi school. I wouldn't say I was like really stupid, but I was quite stupid. And I was quite delinquent. Like I didn't have any interest, but at the same time, my demag was quite sharp. Yeah. So the little bit I'd do, I'd remember it. And so I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was the best or conformist. I was quite like nerdy, on the edge, not really interested. Then as I got to 14, 15, I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be a part of something. Yeah. I wanted to, you know, be more positive. I don't know, in a way, yeah? Yeah. And be with things and like, you know, understand my identity. And then I went to the Northampton Library. This is in the days when you had really good libraries. Yeah. And fantastic resources and books. And obviously, that's not the case so much anymore. People aren't into reading anyway. Yeah. And I'd got out all the books on religion, like literally the whole shelf. And like, you know, you could take like 10, 15 books out. I can't remember. Then I'd read them like in a week, get the next lot. Read all the ones by McLeod and Sikhi, this. And I'd like make little notes even back then, like what Sarvalo Granth that he's mentioned or what's yeah. Dasam Granth. And then I'd ask my BB and she'd explain to me the best she could. And she yeah, was right what she said. It's very brief. Basic, yeah. yeah, basic. And I asked different people. This is coming on to 15. And then I just thought, you know what? I am really interested in all this stuff. I am really interested in the Dharam. And I had a mystical experience as well. Hmm. Uh, when I was about 15, I just really expanded. And I felt like I was part of everything. Okay. And I can't explain why it was. But I remember I'd, I'd, I'd read Geek and Sri Lada part. But I'd never... Att- att- attributed the experience to it yeah. happened after the party as I was falling asleep and I just felt like I'd been shot outside of the universe and I was seeing it as a little speck yeah. like a little dot and I was like what's that and I, ne- and I knew there's something more it made me question more because it was such a deep clear experience this one so vivid I can remember it now yes and then anyway I didn't know I didn't have a spiritual sense uh, I had a I had a, a more of a mind sense yeah okay. uh, from the conditioning and then I thought you know what I was going to cut my hair because how do I know what having haircut is if you don't have one yeah so it just got to that kind of reality with me and also uh, you know some of my teachers made me think a lot there was like Dr. Harmon a science teacher he used to say a lot of thought provoking comments okay. so I think he was into like a psychedelic world or LSD world or something where he was looking at the universe different yeah and he used to teach physics and chemistry he made me think a lot then there was later on. There's another teacher who influenced me a lot as well. I'll mention his name when I come to it. <clears throat> and then, yeah, I got to 15, cut my gear, and then I thought, went to school. I thought, actually, I'm still a packy. Yeah, and that's the thing. Now, now I'm a packy with cut hair. That term doesn't change, does it? Yeah, they yeah. They see you as they see you. Yeah, and then I went to my BB, and she was like, refused to even speak to me, even like give me a hug. I said, BB, my galti ki tia, my ki sakra ne amotke. Uh, I understand why now. Yeah. Uh, getting rid of it in a weird way made me understand why I should have it. Because I thought, well, I'm just now a packy with cut hair. Yeah. I'm not any different, you know? And the, and the racism didn't stop. Yeah. And then at school, I can stand, you know, for me, I'm not a violent person, I'm not an aggressive person, mm-hmm. but I can stand my ground if I have to, yeah. to another level if I have to. And so my dad and, and mum had enrolled us in karate and, you know, different martial arts, different things from when we were very young. And so this guy kept saying, fucking packy, fucking bubble ding ding, fuck packy packy, you know yeah. how they do it. And I thought, Daddy Mardi, yeah? yeah. And I smacked him in the face, yeah? yeah. Sent him flying. And after that day, no one, no Gorai in the school kissed him in the coffin, yeah? yeah. I became like a god, you know what I mean? Well, they, because, knew, they knew that they were going to get repercussions if they yeah, said that sort of thing. because he was the big strong guy. Yeah. And I sent him flying, yeah? yeah? And so then that was it. I mean, I was still a nerd, but... I was a dangerous one. Yeah. So then they respect me and like, buy me sweets at lunch and buy me crisps and stuff like this. Just completely changed by beating this guy up, just punching him once. Yeah. And then I just thought, wow, you know what? It's very shallow, yeah? I started yeah. to see it's very shallow. Then I thought, I'm still a packy. Yeah. And there was a Kala who got a lot of grief and the Rastafarians came to help him. Yeah. So racism was a kind of big feature of what was happening and then trying to get somewhere. Then my own identity uh, as a sect, having gish. So these are the main things I was, you know, the pull and push of these two worlds. Yeah. And then I got to sixteen. I went to Western Favel Upper School, just just down the road, and there was Dr. Baines there, who's my sociology teacher. Again, very thought provoking, up and up and Yeah. And he'd think very deep, and he'd use all the different sociological theories, and you know, when you juxtapose them, there's a lot of information you get. Of course. And I started looking at things in a different way. Start, and that really shifted my mindset a lot. And again, I did a lot of truancy. 
yeah. I didn't bother so much. I, I still pass everything. I just about stay in school. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, I'd go bare. Yeah, bare, I'd go bare minimum. Yeah, and I'd get enough notes from mum and dad, you know. But I was kind of skiving a lot, and I'd just sit here, play a game, read a book, uh, watch TV, talk to my BB. Yeah. I was just just relaxed all the time, to be honest. Yeah. And then I didn't like this pressure of the of the school, the pressure on my head of exams and this, but somehow I managed to get through it. Yeah. And then I, as I got to about 17 and I wasn't really, you know, I was, get, I was think I was becoming more and more withdrawn and more and more sad, but I didn't know. Okay. I didn't, didn't really know. I wouldn't say depressed, but Dep- sad. Dispassionate. Dispassionate, yeah, yeah. Dispassionate. And just... You turn away from things, don't you? Turning away yeah. from everything. And I was like really deep in this state. I'd say very deep silence, you know, for a long, long time. Yeah. And I just couldn't really be bothered with anything, couldn't be bothered speaking to anyone too much. And then it started affecting my sleep. And then I started getting real breathing problems. And I ended up in a hospital, nearly died. And at, oh. that, at that point, then I had an NDE. Yeah. And that was so profound, the spiritual experience of, of really dying and coming back, that made me look at life a lot differently. And I started to feel in a different reality. I felt more connected spiritually after that point. It was like I couldn't really be unplugged totally. There was always something there, the residue of that experience left. I can't say lurking in the back of my mind, but right in front of my eyes, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then I was like, I need to do something about this. Then I did a class. I said, Maharaj, I hope I get some good sangha. Yeah. I hope I find some sings. Good take any sings, again, or Javan, nothing like that. And I hope I, I, I meet some good people. Then I ended up going to uni, and at uni, the first one of the first persons I met was Amrit Singh. Was and that he, at Kingston? Yeah, yeah, Kingston. Yeah, Kingston. And he was with the Nanak as Khan Sivit Jatha. And he's, you know, Guru Mukhbanda, I knew yeah. a lot about Gurbani, the Gita, Bhat. And I preferred, I mean, I still went out and drank and did the usual thing yeah, to do yeah. with students. I started to grow my kish. There's also uh, a sing from the Kanakita Nijatha. He was very, uh, very influential, very inspiring. Jibjit Singh still does Kata. Talks now inspired me a lot. And the other one was Bhai Sukhbal Singh. So they did inspire me a lot. And they, then there was Bhai Rajinder Singh, who's disappeared now. And he was uh, one of the dancing students. Okay. So these are back in 95, 96, yeah? Yeah, just so, started. Then, yeah, right? so there's three different influences you can yeah. see now. So it's not just Sikhi. I'm getting lots of different types of Sikhi. And this calm, Seva Sikhi. Yeah. So you can say more Seva Panti, more non-political, yeah. more kind of Bhagati orientated, Seva orientated. The kind of Ethan Jatha, which is very uh, uh, anti-ritual, reforming, yeah. uh, has uh, ideas of doing Kirtan, ideas of how Naam should be done. And then you had Nadar Singh teaching Rajinder Singh Shastra Vidya and his whole idea of Chatka Gatka, to kill yeah. in one move, sings the warriors, we're not just, you know, saintly spiritual people, we have to have a physical Kshatri Mariyadha. Yeah. So these are the three things I was uh, influenced by. And then there was Bhai Harjit Singh from Watford and his brother yeah, yeah. Sajid Singh. And they were kind of uh, espousing the Daksal Mariana. The Bost, yeah. Yeah, Bost, uh, Carlis Star, 1984 stuff. And that was also very inspiring, you know, to think about Punjab and the homeland, what's going on there, the human rights and everything else. So that there was a whole cooking pot there. Yeah. I'd had this NDE, started growing my gears, try, try to uh, not go out so much and try to do my part and jab kisab and being good sangha then, you know, live more of a pure life. <clears throat> that started in year one, year two, and I had ups and downs where I just couldn't maintain it, to be honest. Yeah. It was just like too much in one go. And then suddenly I kind of got my head around it more uh, while I was in Leicester. Yeah. So then in, in Kingston, we had a big problem with the with some people of Pakistani origin yeah. uh, for the grooming things, and they were like chatting up up and And me and my friends, we nearly went to jail, and two of us actually went to jail. And you'll know this from G. G got off. I got off, Sonny got off, and uh, two of our friends, Gerd and Sati, unfortunately, they went to jail. Yeah. So that was a big turning point. That also made me have to deal with the stress, look at things in a different way. I saw the institutionalised uh, racism. Yeah. So in a way, it was a karma from the past following. Like, why am I even in this? That My involvement was very limited. I was involved in old story, though. Yeah. But, you know, what I did, self-defence, is no offence. Yeah. And so, you know, that went on for a while, and you know, the 
it was a it was an eye opener as in how the system works in in England. Yeah, the judiciary system. Handy, handy. Yeah. And then you know to rip up my fingerprints there in front of the police officer, it was really satisfying. Yeah. <clears throat> so we got off, and then I, I, I transferred closer to home, yeah. up Leicester Way, where I met you. And then that's when Sarvalo came out. And there was a lot of antagonism with the Jatha. Yeah. And I started to get like threatening phone calls from them. I started realizing actually, you know, this kind of conflict is in it all of these, okay. whether it's racism or it's in between groups. And I started looking at it more from a sociological perspective of like tribalism and peer groups and, mm. you know, um, kind of subcultures. I started looking at it, playing in my head in that way with it. And then I started to look at old Sikh. Manuscripts because you know, Holy Bones of God, God, I yeah, had the, we had the museum at the time, didn't we? and I knew by Sarvji Singh, yeah. and he'd show me everything. So I'd love going there, yeah. and you know, it was a stone throws away from the campus. Yeah. I'd go over there, have a longer party, look at the manuscripts, and he'd open it all up. Yeah. That made it made me have a big in, interest, yeah. And then in '96, I forgot to mention, I ended up in India with my parents of Allah Mahalla. And that's when I first had Darshan of Bhadde Babaji, uh, Baba Santa Singh Ji. Yeah. And all the other Jatadars and a lot of Mahapurus like Baba, Lab Singh, and Jadis Hurvi Jadis Santhya. Mm. Um, you know, Baba Nahal Singh, Muni Jadis Hari, Jadis Santhya, Baba Bidi Chanduni, Kyan Singh Maskeen, Kathava, all these, uh, we had all the Darshan in this time. Yeah, I remember seeing photos and photos on Flickr at the time, yeah. And yeah, and yeah. yeah. And so that was a real good Darshan Mila. And then it, when I saw Nahang Singh, I was like, I'm going to become like that. And it was just something from within me because I felt the the warrior thing, the saintliness, the kind yeah. of discipline and, and just, you know, the awesomeness of it all. I could say, one of the first times I could see you going that way was at uni. Mm. At uni, we went to, there was a Santa mm. Margaret in Leicester, good day, what's good day. You know, we're at uni, we wear t-shirts, whatever, we just walk around. And it's the first time I've seen you in a bar. That was the first time, and I could just see then, from the, you were going towards that way, I could see the progression. Yeah. And there was an, like an attraction or a pull for you yeah. straight away. And we had the influence of Bai Man Pri Singh, Ram yeah. Janga, Ram yeah. Singh. And, you know, he's a fully-fledged Mahakal back then, wasn't yeah. he? And, uh, you know, unfortunately he lost his way, but he had a lot of gyan and, yeah. and he shared a lot. So also he was a big influence on me. Yeah. And then, yeah, and so then that was 96, and then I came back, then I ended up, you know, doing your Sangat and in the Leicester, Baba Riyam Singh, Deep Baba Singh. Kalm Singh, being yeah, yeah. involved in the Gordwara there yeah. with you guys for all that time. Talks but, at Sikh Sai, Andy. I remember you doing that, I remember one of the best, best stories you gave, you were just talking about, you know, you said you're walking along Leicester, and uh, you listened to Barney and said, God is infinite, and you just, I remember your... Your metaphor, you're looking up at the, the BT building in Leicester, and, you know, and you looked up at that, and you go, it's massive. And you th- just went, holy shit. And you just realised, you're like, if God is infinite, this is massive as it is, this building. I just remember your analogy when we were sitting there, and, and you did that Seek Sock talk, and I was just like, that was a big thing for me when you when you did that. I remember you doing those in those days. Yeah, no, it was a special time. A special time. Pretty MPR boss, Higa. Yeah. Michael Winder Singh was there as well. Did I call the... Nahang Singh, yeah. And who we came again at Gurmukh was again, and it was a good time. John Peter Singh, Nirmala. Yeah, you introduced me to him. And he, and there, you know, there was a, a, a cooking pot of a lot of different minds and a lot of different sochani, which is really beautiful. Yeah. And everyone got along, Piyar Dinal, it was good. And then, yeah, Sarvul.com came out, and then, yeah, after coming back from India, and then after that, I kind of graduated, yeah. and I was in a no man's land. Like, I didn't know, I was offered a really good chemistry job in the United States with a big company. Okay. And it was working on military-grade plastics. What were you studying at uni for? What were I you did studying? chemistry with biomedical science. Because obviously you and my cousin, really dropped out. Yeah. He was doing pharmacy at the time, wasn't he? I, I did, remember I did. you lot were in the same building. That's right, that's right. Yeah. And and so, yeah, we were in the same building. I think it's called the Hawthorne, Hawthorne yeah. Theater building. Yeah. And... Yeah, then I thought, okay, I could go for this job in the States. And it was really a good package. You get a car, you get a house, they pay it off for you. Mm. You have a career, and I'd be working in R&D. Because okay, yeah. I'd actually managed to work on some of the problems uh, in their lab and 
have some forward motion okay. about some of the things that they were working on mm. and take it in a good direction with some good like uh, experiments and strategies how to deal with the different things that they they were looking at in plastics yeah and it, and it was we were also looking at how to use nylon six in in implants in like you know for amputees or bone replacement that type of thing because you know you can make it stronger than steel so this is prior to 3d printing and things exactly like that. exactly so this is what 3d printing is based exactly yeah. and i've really got into it i'd go yeah. into the lab really get into it i thought young guy huh? you know because this could be for someone whose like arm is blown off or whatever mm. they were looking like looking at it in that for, for that direction you know for soldiers who lose limbs yeah prosthetics handy handy mm. and then obviously that has a wide application in society yeah so i was looking at all that type of stuff and going work and then i just you yeah. know i couldn't just couldn't feel it and um, by that time my bb had passed away in 1999 i went to the boss camp met by bulgar singh and others Jagrad singh, as well, uh, Jagrad yeah. singh and then I didn't really know what to do. And what do you do when you don't know what to do? You go to India. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the reset, isn't it? You know it's what I mean? Reset, yeah. so, I, so I ended up in India, uh, spent time with the Buddha Dal, spent time at the different Thaksabs. Tanatali, Baba Hari Singh Ji. Anji, Baba Hari Singh Ji. And all the different Jere, Mahapurik Sige. And it was then so Sanna, right? Yeah. And so I went with Bob Singh, Jira Boss Da Siga. Yeah. And still around, uh, Bison Talk Singh Boss Da. Uh, Hajit Singh from Southall, his brother Indy, mm. Baldev Singh from Coventry, we all went out there. Yeah. And Baldev Singh got a bit closer to the Nahangs than we did. We spent time with the Free HO, Baba Lab Singh, other, other Santa Marburg. But he got a bit closer. We'd go in and out of everyone and yeah. just be with everyone kind of thing. And then I stayed in India longer. Mm. So then I stayed with Baba Mani Singh, uh, Karl Bungayale from Birmingham. Okay, yeah. And then I uh, stayed with different Mahapur because obviously he spoke English. Yeah. I spent time with Baba, Jibji Singh, Harko Alale, yeah. and different. And then Baba, Mithal uh, Prakash Singh, Nirmala, Kankalale. Yeah. And, you know, the different, yeah, they, I guess he's Sadhu Santana. Hmm. I went, went all over in India basically. And Swami Shankar Das, okay. uh, Dasim. I spent time with him and. Uh, well, I don't know how many people are here, but he used to be Sangalwala Akara as a man. Anantanath. Anantanath, yeah. Kanji. I spent time with him, yeah. doing his Sangat. And then I just went a bit outside of the Nahang Sampradha, look at the other ones, Seva Pantris, Baba yeah. Saji Singh, Baba Makkan Singh. Yeah, yeah. Sato, so, so 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 All so of these, yeah. did Sangat of all of them, met all of them. Jwaddi uh, Taksalare, Baba Sucha Singh. And, and I got close to a lot of them, Hana, and yeah. a lot of them wanted me to stay there with them. But no, I couldn't. Just, you stayed. That's where you met. Um, oh, who are the things that do the Kirtan at 3HO? Um, Jagata Guru, Sadhasa, yeah. Yeah, Hamadu, you Andy. met them there. And then I met them. Because I remember you seeing your photos when you met them. Yeah, yeah. We lived together yeah. for a while. I yeah. mean, they're really kind and let me live in their house, yeah. which was just a few gully away from Darbar Okay. And then I would train with uh, Bai Sarji Singh Laddi, who was a Shikirs of. Who is a Shikirs of Bible B Singh Ji. Yeah. I used to go to Bible B Singh Ji for Kirtan lessons. And Professor Raveel Singh, he's a Manji Sahib's head. Uh, yeah, yeah, Kirtan. Yeah, yeah. And so I learned a bit of Kirtan f- f- from those Baba Ji's. I met Sada, Bai Avtar Singh, Jere Kirtaniya, you know. From yeah, yeah. Dilio. Hanzi Diliale, uh-huh. uh, his nephew, uh, and. Uh, like Kaltar Singh. Kaltar Singh Ji, yeah. Hanji, met all of them. And so I did really good. I was really fortunate, Hana. Yeah. Met Yogi Ji, Hana, uh, who was also a big influence other than Baba Santa Singh. But something was pulling me back to the Nahang Singhs. Yeah. So I'd always go there and I'd go to the Burj, uh, Kalifulla Singh Burj, which is near the Barasa. Yeah. And then then you, you probably know Sodi Singh from, uh, from Kentways. Yeah. yeah. Nahang yeah, Singh, yeah. Hana. So he came and I'd never had Deg. And yeah. he said, Deg Shakaniya, if you were Nahang Singh, because I had all the Bana and everything. <laughs> And I said, well, I've not really ever had it. And he goes, Shakala, because he, he was quite hot on it's that weird. stuff. <laughs> and, so, and so we, yeah, we, we had it there. And it took me into a similar place like the NDE. Yeah. And I was in my, like, Gamara, and I used to live in Nahang for the Vars. Uh, really kind, the SGPC actually gave me a room, even though I was in the Hang Singh, which is unknown of. 
and they gave me it for four or five months. That's awesome. With Lunga Bani, and I sit there because I knew I was learning stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, then I stayed once they chucked me out because they did in the end, <laughs> and then then. <laughs> Because they were having an election, so they needed all the rooms, and yeah. then they wouldn't give me the room back. But then I stayed in South Wales, I and think, really. And then after a year after, uh, by Jagarad Singh came uh, Basics of Sikhi, and yeah, and his first marriage was out there. I did his Ananda college and everything kind of. Yeah. And there's a lot of mystical moments. There's a lot, so many spiritual things happen. But there's a lot of information, you know? but I was always drawn to the what I saw as the straightforwardness of the Nahang Singhs. There was no pussyfooting around. Yeah. And then I, I, I remember going to a lot of different Babaji's and they'd give me a shivad and everything. And I went to Baba Jiginder Singh Ji, who's the head of Buddha right now. Rakhwil. Haji Rakhwil. And I said, Baba Ji, now I'm these are the Bakshu. You know how you ask? Yeah, that's uh, always. Maa Burk Sant, isn't it? And he said, yeah, I'll be Japan now then, but. And, uh, you know, and that was it. It was such a straightforward reply. Yeah. And I just realized, wow, every, what have I been searching around for? I need to sit down and try and do this myself. Mm. And got some guidance from Babaji. And then uh, and then I ended up back in England. Um, this is about now 2001, something like that, 2000. Yeah. And then I, I've been going on and off India since it was 96, 99, 2000, and so and I still don't know what I should really do. Mm. And I've been reading a lot about Dasam Granth. Went all the way through Mahan Gorsh, looking at the entries. Uh, the Library of Congress stuff started to come online. Because remember, this is the days, like, got so much stuff online. Yeah. You couldn't get half these books. Yeah, exactly. You couldn't even get them from India. Mm. And that's all spiraled out of, massively spiraled, you know, mm. almost, I'd say, out of control. Yeah. But it spiraled massively since when we started. Well, we couldn't get a book. You couldn't get a book, yeah. I remember coming to you to borrow a book. You'd yeah. go to me or we'd have to hunt down libraries to go. Here's a book. Well, forget, forget on the grants. 1984 books were hard to come by. Andy, Andy, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I, and I just want to go back to when I started in, in London because I was doing pharmaceutics to go yeah. on to, be, to do pharmacy. Mm. But I, I mean, I was interested, but I wasn't interested. But I remember reading a lot about plant medicine yeah. in those entries. And that got certain things moving in my brain. And that's why I just didn't do straight chemistry. I went into chemistry with biomedical science. Mm. I could have gone straight chemistry. I could have done it at Warwick Uni. I could have done it anywhere. But I chose a split subject because I had two interests. Yeah. And so, anyway. Then I, after all that, so I'd finished my degree ages ago. These years have gone on. I've gone on, on, back and forth to India, staying here. Also doing CFI with Bob for boss yeah. camps and other things like that. And then we started the Sikh student camp yeah. uh, in London and helping out with that, trying to you know, be on the original team, even though we got pushed out in the end and, you know, car set on fire and all types of stuff. It all got really, you know, really dirty. Hmm. And anyway, so then I was kind of like, that's when I met um, my partner at the time yeah. and, uh, you know, went on to have a family and everything. And then I started thinking, what should I do? And then I was in North Northampton gym and I saw a poster for Sikh studies at Birmingham University. Okay. And I thought, well, I've got sciences, how do I get in? And I I'd already, already knew by that time that there were probably eight or nine compositions in the standard Dasam Granth that were not. Uh, sorry, there were eight or nine compositions not in the standard Dasam Granth. Gorbis Gita, Gurdanti, Chandi Chakra. Um, um, Mark Konsky bar things like that. Handy, handy. Yeah. And so then I realised that, and so I put in a proposal saying to research that. And obviously that's very that means you've got had to do a lot of reading. Yeah. And I went through it bit by bit, and I put like a it's like a ten page proposal. Mm. And I said, well, I've done science background. I'm not really having an art, having a literature. And so they said, yeah, you know, you can do it. But you need to do a masters. And so I did a master's in Sikh study at Birmingham Uni, really good. Dr. Jyoti Jol, Dr. J David Cheatham in research methodology. He's a Christian theologian. Yeah. And but you know he's teaching teaching research methods like how do you research the like lineage of manuscripts, historical methods. How do you apply a, a psychological method? How do you self check while you write yeah. something so it's authentic, it's unbiased as much as it possibly can be. Well, obviously, all the stuff referencing all the rest of it. How do you put it together? Yeah. 
and so and then she was teaching obviously the Sikhi side and then you know we met other people at the time like Paisal Kasik now does yeah. uh, Bahadur Singh who's converted to Shia Islam uh, John Deer Singh was a lot on the scene you were a lot yeah. on the scene getting the Sigman from Leicester yeah. who'd done an MA in Dasam Grand so I contacted him we became very close friends we're still good friends now yeah. And then, yeah, we started writing stuff, and then so... There you go. you got yeah. a plethora of stuff to go through. Let's... Yes, for, first thing we, we looked at was he discovered that McLeod had got the date of Priam Samada Gronk, yeah. which was a huge thing, because I was... I hadn't published anything, but I knew there was a lot of mistakes in McLeod's work yeah. from everything that I'd read. And, and we're talking just... I'm not talking, like, mistakes in opinion. That's his opinion. I'm not talking like that. I mean... In terms of dating of manuscripts, of historical uh, references, of translations, there were yeah. lots of different glaring mistakes. That was, and one was about Priam Samada Gun. Yeah, and we kind of sensed that it was wrong. And Gurinder, all credit to him, he found Leyden's manuscript of a translation of Priam Samada Gun around 1800, which meant Priam Samada Gun could have not been written in the 19th century. Yeah, because he's Leyden's works. Thankfully, um, Grinson gave me a copy of the Bridget the Yeah, that's one of the earliest translations of Bridget the exactly. as well. And then, we, then we published that, yeah. and then that linked on into my own PhD. Yeah, which I just want to go a little bit into. Which I'm trying to steal. You can, maybe one day. You can, <laughs> you can, you can it's massive, man. Right? Yeah, Maharaj gave us all the hymn that the Guruji blesses us with, Anna. Right. And then. What that led on to, yeah. what Garinder and myself had discovered was that I realised that many of the dates of many manuscripts in Sikh history had been deliberately redated by the Singh Sabha and by scholars from the West. Yeah. And so I made like a brief list, but you know, Das Gurkatha, Prelada Rehatanama, Chopa Singh Rehatanama, Prince Mada Grant, Siri Guru Soba Grant, Gurbarat Pasha Isevi. Bhagat Ratanavali, also Guru Sikhanka Bhagat Mala, Guru Ratan Mala Sosaki, Guru Balas Pashai Dasmi from Kaur Singh, Bansavali Nama, Mema Prakash, Guru Kiya Sakhiya, Guru Balas Pashai Dasmi, and Siri Guru Pant Prakash by Ratan Singh Pangu. And even if you look at Ratan Singh Pangu, they date around 1841, it can't be. It's too late. It's too late because you've got Octoloni, you've got Murray, it's all going towards 1800 again. Of course, yeah. And so all of this stuff has been pushed along to make it look like it's historically incorrect. Yeah, because they look at it as these are secondary sources instead of primary sources. That's right. That's, what That's right. And so I started looking at that and then, you know, I was I had a I had a work ethic, but I can't say I was the best. And so for me, doing Sikh studies at that time was I was thinking of maybe being a lecturer or something. Mm which I went on to do in that time, I became a lecturer at Soaz in, in Punjabi. Yeah. And then, you know, working as an expert witness for the Crown Prosecution Services, and Command 10, New Scotland Yard, GCHQ, that type of stuff I was involved in for a year or two. But then I left it, it was very stressful stuff. And But the thing that, the reason I went into Sikh studies was looking at that, so I wanted to get my qualification quickly. Mm. And so within the first year, I'd written most of that thesis actually. Yeah. It was all pretty much done. Um, he just needed tidying up, and I presented it to my uh, my supervisor, and he said, "You know what? You'll get your PhD, yeah. but I would never consider you a scholar well, because yeah. you don't know the languages, you know, fully. You could know them better. You could have done bigger translations of those Barnia, like complete translations, yeah. and you could have done this. And I and I really took what he said." To heart, yeah. and then I started looking more into the Persian, into the Sanskrit, into Bridge Basha, Rupert Snell's, you know, Bridge Basha reader, mm. you know, looking that, talking to Bahadur, you know, he's a Vedwan yeah, languages, yeah, yeah. and then going through this, and then that ended up in the next part, which was the translations. Yeah, this one first, I think. The questions and answers. Yeah, we did questions yeah. and answers, yeah. but then I started writing this. It wasn't published though. No, I remember seeing it. I went to yeah. Gurinder Singh Man's house. Yeah, yeah. On a weekend, because that's when I spoke to him about Dr. Layden's stuff. Yeah. So he handed me the Bichitanatic manuscript, and he had your stuff on his computer. How and he just said to me, he goes, this is all common rule stuff. I'm trying to put it into my stuff. We're trying to put a book together. Yeah. I remember that's the first time I saw the Sukhwana Sahansa, uh, the Sukhwana Sahansa, uh, the Sahansa novel. Hanji, Hanji. And so then this, 
I mean, you know, it's a good portion of this book with him. And all credit to him, he does a very, he did a very good commentary uh, on it. And and we put it together like like he, you know, narrated there. And so that's a good chunk of the book. Hmm. And so then that was extra. I didn't want to include that in my appendix, in, 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 my, in my thesis. It would just be too much. Yeah. And, and there's no point having an appendix when you're not referring to it. Yes. And so that's why I put it as a separate work. Then I finished the doctorate. And in between, we wrote a basic book, Questions and Answers. Yeah. That was... And, you know, it's an important book for somebody who doesn't it's, know about Dustin. It's, it's what really kicked off. Because at the time, you had the... The big Sikh missionary movement to push against Dasam Gurdon. Andy, Andy. You had um, Professor Darshan Singh, people like that, really proponents trying to push against Sri Dasam Gurdon. So yeah. that came out at the right time. Andy, Andy. Yeah. And you know, this is my own like copy. It's got, like, you can see loads of pen where we've made typos because this is our first book that we wrote. Yeah. But there's a lot of uh, important sources. And I, Myself, like some of the sources get in that um, contribute to this, I still look at even today. The Ananda Purwali Bir and things like yeah, that, yeah, which yeah, are dated I, as the I earliest dozen. Exactly, I still look at today. And and so then I, then I finished off the, the dissertation. I was still going to India every year. I'd, I'd go there for up to eight weeks every single year without missing it. Ulla Mahalla, I've done 12 Ulla Mahallas, yeah. uh, over 12, maybe, maybe more. Uh, I lost count. And then the thing is, then I do Chakravati around India, the ducks, different places, Jules Saab. Yeah. And, and then I started looking more into Shastra Vidya. So mm. a small amount of time, I went to a few of the dance classes, but it's like Wolverhampton, a bit far, mm. and just hanging out with the students, learning a bit. And then I thought, well, I need to go to India and, and learn from somebody who, who knows some stuff. And so then I'll, after, because I, could do intens- intensives. I learned from Baba uh, Gyan Singh, Singh yeah. who just died recently. Mm-hmm. He was very, very old. He was in jail with Mahatma Gandhi. He's a freedom fighter like Fayyad and these Singh. He's yeah. very unknown. You know, only the people really deep into the Sampradha know him yeah. because he was so incognito. He literally stayed three, four days somewhere, move on. Yeah. And I was lucky that he sh- he taught me the Mool Mantra of Shastra Vidya, basically. Okay. And he showed me some other things and other techniques and, and how it, the system works, you can say. And then Baba Pritam Singh from Patiala, Rinji mm-hmm. Takara. Yeah. And then, you know, learning from him and then talking to others and then Pai Manji Singh from Amrasar. And then, yeah, just there's a whole list. And then staying with those Gurmukhs and trying to learn something of this. And then... While I was doing all this, this is the this leads on to the current day. Um, I started to obviously when you go somewhere like the British Library, you look at Dasam Granth. You're not just going to look at Dasam Granth Sahib. Mm-hmm. You're going to look at Guru Granth Sahib. There's who, by the last day, he reported on manuscripts. You know, there's by Maharaj Singh's Khajana there of his book. Yeah, I've seen it. And this chunk and this suya. Yeah. Angie, Angie. Yeah. And there's a Granth there, and it's very different to what we read normally. It's different. Type of material in there. Yeah, because Bob had, Bob G. G. Singh, obviously, their lineage had quality. They come off Bob Marlowe Singh. Yeah, yeah. So they were looking at it, and their Gurkha side is, it's got Ard Bani in there, Sri Guru Granth Sahib's Bani. It's got a lot of Dasan Bani in there. Yeah. And halfway through, you get Chan Kaniti in there. Exactly. You know, like, this is in the Gurkha side, you know. Yeah, like. exactly, exactly. Uh, and then you got like some Vedant Pasha in there as well, you like. Yeah. Yes, completely different from completely any different. any good guy I've ever seen. Exactly. And then I was like looking at Sawasaki and I and I got out every single manuscript that was in the British Library Hathlik and yeah. I looked at every single one yeah. over a period of uh it was about six months or so. I had okay. to go regularly. And there was Paramji Singh, I met him, you know, uh, Warrior Warri Singh. Sansa. And uh, Amadi Singh uh, Madhara, there's Dharanjit who works in British Library now, Dharanjit Singh. Lots of Guru Moksha, huh? did they, who try to contribute to the Panth and do their thing. Yeah. And then, yeah, and so then, you know, Gaybari, huh? uh, if we'd have a little conversation, have lunch together, exchange ideas, which is important. Because that's, you know, when someone's got experience, it saves you time. Yeah. And so I remember Bharamji pointing a few things out about the entries, like, he's one of the first people who told me, all the f- cataloging, the British Library is incomplete, and you have to look in the written catalogue okay. to find the Guru Mukhi manuscripts and that's why they did a project to uh, catalogue the whole lot yeah. but it's unfortunately it's not online it's not online anymore it really frustrated me because I was re- going to rely on it and then I had to go and do it myself yeah. to see what was there and then 
this is where my direction changed a little bit. Mm. I went to the Western Trust Library, and if you know Western, uh, no, I don't know. Never it, heard of it. Uh, sorry, Wellcome Trust, okay. and the Wel Wellcome Trust Library is a medical library. Okay. And it's on Euston Road, same road as uh, the British Library. There's about four hundred Gurumukhi Hufflings there. Okay. And a lot of them are on medicine. Okay. So I'm like Ayurveda. There's even sexual texts there. Yeah. And they'll show you sexual positions in Gurumukhi. Yeah. Like court literature from the Guru's time. So very a lot of Gork Shastas and things are. Exactly. Very yeah. controversial yeah. for modern people to get their heads around. And you know, Gork Shastas are mentioned in Dasam Grant yeah, yeah. and uh, their relationship with Tirith Rup Kyao. Yeah. I started looking at things like that, which are a bit on the edge. And I started to look at the medi medicine books. And I realized, wow. All of these modern medicines have been extracted from the knowledge of these ancient medicines. Yeah. That was my hypothesis because they had Yunani medicine, Arabic medicine, yeah. they had like Chinese medicine, and they had like obviously Ayurvedic medicine grants there. Yeah. And I can't read all of that, I don't, I'm not familiar with the languages, but I'd have a little peek. I'd yeah. be nosy and have a look or talk to an expert who knew about this kind of stuff. And then I started going around the world looking for manuscripts, Canada. Found a medicinal grant out there in 2003 that's in the possession of a family, digitized that. And then Chester Beatty Library in Ireland, and then even in the Cambridge, Oxford libraries, Edinburgh University, John Ryland's Library, Manchester, uh, the Louvre in Paris, and all over the world in Germany, you know, I found the collection of uh, Trump. Uh, okay, yeah, I was trying, yeah. yeah, yeah, I found some of his manuscripts and so on and so forth, yeah. uh, which are coming in my next book. Okay. I go through the manuscripts that he used to translate Guru Granth Sahib, okay. and he's written handwritten notes and all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Not many people even know that he had his own Guru Mughal manuscript collection. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I look at that in the, in the next book, and I look at intelligence reports of the British about why they want to translate Dasam Granth in detail, and Guru Granth Sahib, why they want to do it. Okay. And I look at the whole translation project and the, how the the vid was looked at in the same vid, for, uh, same vein from Max Muller yep. and McAuliffe and this whole idea of reformation. Yeah, of course. Uh, it is. Uh, and that's two volume book coming up. And so I got into all of this, but on the side, I'd always keep looking at medicine, like medicine, because I'm obviously coming from pharmaceutical background, where I've got a diploma and a chemistry of biomedical science. And in my degree, about a quarter of all our module, modules were shared over two years with medical students. Okay. So you get an interest, like what, you know, oncology, how does cancer begin? Cancer, yeah. Why does it begin? And so I had an interest in all these kind of things. And and then in India, when I would learn uh, from the Taksal, Sante and stuff yeah. in uh, Bram, uh, Bram Buddha Market. Okay. They have a little doctor there. Yeah, they got shot there. Right? Hanji, yeah. Hanji, I'd learn upstairs. I would go to a Nirmala, like a little kuti like yeah. a little small little house, but he had an Ayurvedic dispensary. And I don't know this Babaji's name, yeah? So I'm I was about to say, is that, uh, there's, there's two or three. Is it Amrasar? Is it Amrasar? Okay, it's yeah. just near, nearby there, it's like yeah. one gully. I don't know that Babaji's name, but I would sit with him every day, like for a month, yeah? yeah. Is that a free dispensary? Uh, no, it wasn't free. It wasn't free. Okay, it was paid. But he was a Nirmala Sadhu. Yeah, um, he wasn't Gristi, and that was yeah. what he did. Yeah. And any donations are given to the Hardwar, you yeah. know, uh, uh, Kala. Yeah. And so I'd sit with him, and he would basically tell me everything. So I'd say, Pang mm. And he'd say, Oh, well, there's this, there's that. It's, it's small quantity. He kind of explained to me. Large quantity, tamoguni, affect this, yeah, affect koshki, make it go mentally Depends insane. on the birds, depends on the leaves, depends on the stems. Depends yeah, yeah, on, yeah, yeah. And because so then I started getting an idea of it, you know, sitting with him. Yeah. I can't say I'm an expert because obviously he's a Vadwan of Sanskrit. He's done it on a very, very high level. But I would just used to sit with him and just explore a little bit. And obviously in the Dalpan, they don't use any medicines. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I had that whole kind of uh, exposure there as well, mm -hmm. living with the Dal. And <clears throat> under Baba Santasi. And also, you know, documenting Babaji, interviewing, interviewing him, his work, trying to get any old books, trying to get these um, photos of the Nahang Singh Sandesh and everything else, and that's been published. And then, anyway, so still, I'd always be pulled to the medicinal grants. Like I'd be looking for by there are things like Dasam Grant, I'd find a medicinal grant, I'd sit there looking at it, trying to figure it out, and then talking to people who are kind of experts in that work, huh? Yeah. And then. 
Gal Air Boy Siggy about going on about nearly twenty years ago, I say about one big salta one on here. Ex sing I think I've made a call. Yeah. And he says, Sing, you know, you've got quite a bit of knowledge, you stayed out with the sings and I've got a really personal problem. Yeah. And I don't really see myself as much of a counsellor or psychologist, anything like that. Obviously I've I've read a lot of that literature mm. and used it in some of my methods in my work. But I can't say I'm like qualified to do any of that kind of stuff. Yes. And I said, God, like, yeah, you know, just, you know, so that and God, like, you could do your docs off with me. He goes, uh, he goes, uh, I have to go and have the snip. So yeah. be circumcised. Yeah. And I said, really? I said, tell him no. <laughs> mm. He goes, no, no, I've got really bad infection yeah. down below. A fungal infection, which for a man is very unusual. Yeah. You have to be very depleted physically. And so, as it turned out, he had night terrors, he had eczema, asthma, depression, uh, and he had this fungal disorder. So his body was letting him down, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, he had a lot, a lot of stuff going on. And he said to me, you must know something. You must know somebody who can do something, because I'm literally shitting myself thinking about having the snip. Yeah. Do I have to really have it? And I said, babe, you know, the doctor saying to you, man, what, you know, mm. you know, that's a bit being cut off. You might lose all of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I just put it into perspective. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I try to put it into perspective for him. <laughs> and he said, no, no, I'm really scared. Really, well, you must know something. And I said, well, look, you know, in the Hang Sings, you know, there's like, we believe in herbal medicines. I yeah. don't really use medicine myself. And I've been pretty much medicine free for over 20 years. When the doctor saw me in London. He couldn't find my notes because yeah. I hadn't been like Any since notes. I'd been like 15 or something. Like 17, so I went to hospital 17 because mm. I started doing yoga, pranayams, yeah, to yeah. heal myself, my own asthma. And I'm completely medicine free. I don't use anything, yeah. nothing. And the doctor at that time, when I nearly died, he said, sign on to disability for your life. Okay. That's how much I was crippled by it. Yeah. And my dad said no because my dad had TB when he came from India and they offered him the same. Yeah. And he said, no, fight through it. You can you overcome it. it. And I overcame it, and I don't use no medicine. So the doctor was surprised. He hadn't seen me for years when I went. Hmm. No medicine. I mean, doctors see people every year. See me every week, right? Yeah. They hadn't seen me for like over over like nearly 30, not, not, not 30, maybe 20 odd years. Yeah. From 17 to about, yeah, about big sales a year. Or maybe even longer than that. Hmm. And then, how old am I now? B cells, B cells. Yeah. I said B B cells again, and and so like they couldn't find my notes and stuff. They hadn't, they weren't accustomed to that kind of stuff. And so I didn't know. I don't know about the medical world. I live in a bit of a different world. Yeah. And then I then this thing he was going to the doctors all the time. He was going to Harley Street. He just spent eighty grand mm-hmm. trying to fix all this because on a high paid job. Yeah. And so he could afford it. But, you know, obviously not in one year, but he could afford to pay it. Yeah, over the time. Over the time period, it would have cost him that much. Andy, Andy, and it cost him 80 grand. He said, you must know something. I said, look, you're in the hangs. And he did it right there. Mm. They use Ayurvedic medicine. And he goes, do you know any medicine? I've got, I've, got, I've, got a few, I've got a few that I could use. Because, obviously, the dig that we use is quite shamanic. It's quite ritualistic. Yeah. It goes back to Shibji. Yeah. And, Hannah, and then Guru Gobind Singh modified it for Gristis. Yeah. And then you can see here the Katha, that Surya Prakash, and you know, a lot of the sons and people don't like it. Yeah. It's all written in there. Yeah. And you'll find the use of Sukha there, the Shihidi Dig. And obviously, as a, as a Borg sacrament to the Shihidi, to the Shihid Singhs yeah. who gave their lives, that it's their sacrament. And we gain some power from that. Yeah. And anyway, so I said, you know, Shihidi Dig, there's other things. And I was looking at, at that time, a Boga, Ayahuasca, Peyote. Yeah. And psilocybin. These so everything, are, South American side, Aztec yeah, side. Yeah, kind of all the yeah. psychedelics. Yeah. Because I met a, a sing called Sabal Singh who was from 3HO. Yeah. And I've hung around with the 3HO a lot in my life. I yeah. mean, I, I've kind of, my relationship with them is finished now, but I used to go to all the camps and everything. You did the I, talks, seen you and Sukkot yeah, the talks. Yeah, I realised it's very like. one-sided, huh? Yeah. Because they have clients and make money from everything and then you're going and giving and giving. And I thought, how much can I keep giving? Yeah. I've got, I need my time for my family, my kids, so I yeah. stopped going, huh? But I went out my way for a long time to do that and they've done more than they got huh? They've got their own people. But anyway, it doesn't matter. They're all charity, they know where you'll be budgeting, they're just you to death. 
Yeah. And so Sadbal Singh, he was from obviously from that spiritual family, he said, so I offered him dig in Amrasad once at Kali Fullas in Burj. Yeah. And it was a very uh, spiritual pera that we had at Darbar Sahib after having the dig sitting there. He says, oh, do you know about ayahuasca? Do you know about this? Do you know about that? It's a long time ago now. This, this is before anyone even knew about ayahuasca. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I ended up in Spain taking ayahuasca and yeah. looking at all these things. And I started seeing their healing potential because that's kind of what my work was based on. Even though I was going into prosthetics and nylon six, my work was essentially about uh, medicine yeah. and and health. And so then this carried on for a while and, you know, it was all good. And uh, and, and anyway, so we, we, we got into this discussion and I said, well, try Shahidi Dig, try some of these plants. Yeah. And, and he had them and suddenly the infection started to clear up. Okay. Because the fear that he had inside him was causing the problem. Yeah. And the medicines got rid of the fear. Okay. And then his physical heart had started to change. Of course, yeah. Uh, and uh, so I never really fancied myself doing this work. And he, just himself, he started telling people, I went to this thing, met he called me out. Yeah. And then he told another thing who was from Southampton had a very serious condition called Graves' disease. You mm-hmm. have to have like kind of radiation on your neck. Yeah. And he came here, he was due for radiation the next week, came here, gave him a few things. He had a very, very deep experience and he saw it relate to his own granddad passing away and the kind of fear of the corpse, yeah? Yeah. Well, at the funeral and, and getting the body ready, it freaked him out and that had caused the disease. So we managed to get rid you of that. Okay, Hand you, hand you, getting the fear. And all he pulled out, and then over time, suddenly my work changed. I I was publishing these books, but then I wrote uh, a chapter on on Gatka yeah. for the Handbook of Six Studies, published in England, Oxford yeah. University Press. And then my work started veering away. Already, it was already half like Ayurvedic, and half uh, just academic, yeah. and and Bantic work, Bantic Seva. And trying to focus on the family at the same time. And focus on the family. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, it overwhelms you. I yeah, mean, of I, I used to sleep in my own office here yeah. because I, I'd have so many things to do. Yeah. And then basically what happened is that it got more and more into the kind of healing element of Adavila, yoga, detoxing, mm. people coming who are like, one of my friends, he was an opiate addict okay. from uni. I studied with him. He came. And obviously, the Gaddi I love not looking. Yeah, of course. I wasn't looking for any profit in this. And then, you know, but it became to a level where I could no longer do it for free. Of course, you've got, you got to be able to sustain your yeah, own. Yeah. You've got to pay your bills, you've got to pay your heating, you've got to pay your... That's it, because it was taking up all my time, I know. And then people with depression, anxiety, diabetes, and then it got more and more. And then eventually my academic work now is like literally, my holidays is doing my academic work because I enjoy it so much. Yes. It's like my food of my soul. Yeah, I can understand yeah. that. I can totally and, understand that. And so I kind of, that, dessert cake that Guru Gobind Singh has blessed me with, yeah. uh, that Karaha Prashad of, of Gyan, I only tend to, I work for it, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then I'm a really hungry dog for it. And then when I sit down, yeah. I can really focus on it and enjoy it. And so I do about, in the lockdown, I finished two more books on colonialism and a third book on Emily Eden and her travels into India. And then there's other work on Das Guru Katha, Priyam Samara, Garantare, Ekanamle. And Sarvul Granth, they're all the things that I've written on. And it's already done. It's all just sitting on my laptop. And at a certain point, I'll get it all out there, holly, holly, when yeah. the time's right and my pieces. But anyway, putting that aside, what happened is all my gum started becoming Ayurvedic, my seva. Yes. And then I, I realized I have limitations in my knowledge. So I started to go to Kerala. I had treatments on myself because I broke my hip when I was, I was teaching yoga at orphanage in Africa. Yeah. And I broke my hip. It was a severe injury. And again, I didn't have any medical treatment until two years after the injury. Yeah. So I was walking around with a sore feet for two years. And my family said, look, you need to go and get that checked. And I did. And it was still a massive break. Yeah. And I have never had any operation, never had the wine, never had a painkiller. And I'm walking around. You've seen me walking around. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pretend I've not seen you walking around. <laughs> He's in a wheelchair. No, of course I yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the thing is, these principles work, huh? Yeah. With, with God's grace, with his kirpa, that gyan, all knowledge is from the... The third eyes from the grace of the Guru Guru Prasad. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the Guru Guru Prasad. 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 The Guru
that sometimes that gyan isn't palatable for everybody. It depends situation situation basis. And anyway, so then it just became more Ayurvedic and more really working with people with addictions. So there was an, another brother of mine from a very wealthy family. He d- descended into alcoholism, friend of G's, yeah. and a lot of violence. He was, you know, ended up in court every so often for scuffles, getting off because he's having like family problems that made him drink. Mm. Well, it didn't make him drink, but he it caused his addiction, caused his addiction, addiction towards yeah. alcohol. Yeah. And then we did a few things with some plants, and now he's a lot better. He hasn't drank for the last two weeks, so that was the last case. Yeah. And then I've got another BB coming with scoliosis, where the spine bends. And so I work with all these things, and I work in liaison with a, a, a doctor who does pancha puta, pancha karma, aravida. So pancha puta is the yeah. five elements. Oh, that's it. And so the five tatavas, fire, uh, water, air, earth, and ether. Yeah. And so we work with those five tatavas to rebalance those in the body. Yeah. The sata gun, tamagun, rajogun, vata, pitta, kaf. Yeah, what's that with you? Yeah, balance all that out. Balance, yeah, balance, yeah. And then he works on the prescriptions if they need expensive medicines from India, that stuff we can't get here. Okay. And he helps with difficult diagnoses. And I pra- I kind of do, um, I'm kind of like, he kind of leads the charge, if that makes okay. sense. So I kind of do what he advises awesome. in the difficult cases. In normal cases, I don't really liaise with him, but we work as teamwork. Yeah. And we're making a, an Ayurvedic course online now, so okay. people can become pra- practitioners and do basic treatments on people that aren't harmful and, you know, basic diagnosis and... Uh, giving of herbal medicine okay. so we're working on putting that online uh, this year and yeah so the, this is what I'm get what life has taught me to then I had a few scandals a few problems and it was good because the Bantik Siva and the controversies they were drowning me you know I was getting drowned in it yeah and I tried my best to stand up for Guru's Bani Dasam Granta Ragamala I know Bantik, you know people in the Bantik have got various opinions yeah but I, I'd put the position of the Sampradha forward, yeah. which they're all unanimous in that yeah, regard. Yeah. There's only a few fringe groups that are not within the Sampradha, but generally they're all unanimous in what they believe is the Guru Bani. Yeah. And so I stood that by that for, for a lot, a long time. And then obviously when I made whatever mistakes I did, I became uh, uh, subject to attack heavily. Yeah. And then it was the right moment for me to just disengage from social media. And, and then I... a recluse. Yeah, become more of a clue. So I sat back. I, I saw. Well, actually, this is the work God, I really want to do. I mean, you know, Dasam Grant Saab and you know Salvo Grant Saab and the death. And I'm saying, be a karma yogi, yeah. Raj yogi. You know, just a yogi doing bhakti. No, no, you got to live in the world. Yeah, you got to do something. You got to yeah. you got to help the work, give the karma. Yeah. It's your seva. What seva are you going to do for mankind? And then I thought, okay, this is good. You know, getting people off medications, depression, alleviating their suffering. Yeah. Is something that I can help towards and uh, help people in addictions. And then I've been working now with uh, Dabbanis in Coventry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, we work together in different things and just helping him a little bit and him helping me on his gourmet therapy and just involved in all these, you know. I haven't got my fingers in a lot of pies anymore. It's just it's very. Sounds very... like you still got a lot of fingers in a lot of pies. No, no. For me, this is not many. Before it was like all over the place, like yeah. an octopus. Yeah. Now it's just a bit more like focused. Uh, focused, yeah. And so I like this. I like the kind of work, the seva that I'm doing, the work that I'm doing. Yeah. And it's rewarding to see people's knock you know, that something changes for them. Yeah. Uh, in a natural way, in ways that are not invasive and don't disturb the body long time with the least side effects. Yeah. And so then we also, after lockdown finishes, we'll have treatments for people. So there's one BB coming next week. She has cancer. Okay. And so we've arranged her treatments, Byron Jawsing, Jasing from um from East London. Uh, he's the biker sink. Yeah. And he's arranged her flight. And so we're arranging the cost of her treatment. For the, to go to see the doctor there, yeah. So she has twenty one days of panchakarma. So that's the thing I'm involved in, really. Yeah. They're trying to help people who can't really get help, and then a few of my clients who have come who are very well off. I've had billionaire, billionaires here, millionaires, mm. singers, actresses, actors, West End stars, 
thugs, prostitutes, murderers, yeah. pedophiles. I've had everyone you can imagine come from every different walk of life. And so a really? lot of the wealthier ones now, they're sponsoring the people who can't pay. Okay, that's good. So next week's alcoholic coming from Scotland. He's got post-traumatic stress disorder and he couldn't even pay for his train down. It's £100 down from Scotland to Northampton. And the sponsor paid for that, paid for his treatment. That's good. And so that that's how I'm doing things now, and that's my life and uh, my kids and family, and that's it really. Sing Sarva, other than that, yeah, <laughs> I've got yeah. lots to say. You, you say that I'm going to I'm going to pick apart some of those bits now. <laughs> <laughs> you say you say all that. Um, you, with regards to you, you've you've brushed over it really quickly, but um, you know your studies, everything that you've done with the Sampradas, and I'll just touch on a, on a bit of that. Mm. Um, and the other thing is, obviously, you've talked about your Ayurvedic work. And I know you've said the base of that is based on your education and what you're doing in biomedical sciences. Um, with regards to your yoga, though, how did you get into that? Yoga was... Because you, you were doing that initially for quite a long time. I remember seeing a picture of you in the, in the Maldives, and then you were in like Lithuania, and then you were somewhere else. And then you're like, well, I, I find it hard enough to get to Northampton, let alone get abroad. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. but you were everywhere doing that at one point. Yeah, I mean, yoga for me, my poor Aji, after I nearly died of asthma when I was 17, yeah. she gave me a book, which I still have, I've forgotten the name of the book, but it was one of the first kind of books back in the, in the 90s that advocated yoga for health issues. Okay. And it talks about pranayam, different types of breathing, yeah. relaxation, that book really helped me, and that made me realise I was breathing wrong. Mm. And that was causing the asthma, and the obviously breathing wrong was because I had a complete disillusionment. Yeah, does that make sense? It was causing that, and so I know the psychosomatic effect of these feelings and how they build up and the damage they can cause. And they're subtle; yeah. you just think it's nothing, but it's building up in the back and building up in it until it eats you up until you face it. Yeah, and so. Yoga, I was interested in at uni. I mean, my friends would laugh at me because I'd tell them some yogi principles and yogi things. Yeah. And then Shiv Charan Singh came to our yeah, university. Yeah. Leicester, yeah. Yeah, and he came in 95 in London as well. Yeah. And so he was a big influence. He inspired me a lot. Like, I thought, wow, you know, this guy is a real meditator. Yeah. And he really understands the mind. So he, he, he influenced me very far to kind of recess his more. And I met him in India a few times. And I'd always bump into him. Not so much now because I'm off the free HOC. But mm. you know, he's very wise. And... So then I ended up in, obviously, Kung Fu with uh, Baba. Master Hurley Singh, uh, yeah. Master Hurley Singh, very yogic as well. I remember that, trying to do a horse dance and you taking the piss out of us every week. Yeah, yeah. I can remember doing that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the Qigong stuff he was doing, the Qi yeah. stuff, the yeah. Qi stuff. And so, yeah, that was all really interesting and that took me in the same direction, basically. Yeah. And then I ended up with uh, being in uh, Hardwar and... The Nirmali, to be honest, don't really do a lot of yoga. No, they don't. No. And so I had to go and see like the... Hindu, well, Dasis do. Dasi types. Yeah. And there were some, I'd call them Sings, because the, they're like Dasis, but they're Sings. Yeah. With Swami Shankar Das, who did yoga, who yeah. from Namashe as well, from the same area as me. We did, yo did yoga with them. There was actually one employee of the SGPC. And I don't know if you know, but you know... Um, this, uh, Sant Harnam Singh Puchomandi Ali uh, and the yeah, Tagga didn't yeah, they? The Yogi yeah. Tagga and the Ted. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like Masangal Wali. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This uh, uh, SGPC employee had that as well. Okay. And he'd do a lot of yoga and stuff. Yeah. And he really knew it well. And so he'd learn from Madasis. And so I used to sit with him when I went, when I told you when I lived, lived there for four months. So I'd sit with him, Kenta here, Kenta there, learning from him, then going into various Akari. And there was a Swami Raghu Vedanath okay. in Delhi. And then he showed a little bit about how it's related to martial arts. Okay. Yeah, not too much, but a little bit. Huh? Very similar to the Sanjum Kiriya, which Nadar Singh talks about. Not like that, but more ha about how yoga, like some yoga movements are like martial arts. Yeah. And can be applied mar like with a sword or so, with a stick or something. So you're talking like how Zen Buddhists talk about it. Exactly. Because they, they, they do their movements, which are martial arts, but they do it for... Exactly. Eternal harmony uh, in the same way yoga is done. Exactly. So he was showing a bit like asan like that. Yeah. And some of the... There's an asan, tripadar asan, where you, you go forward on your hand on one leg. Okay. And he was saying, well, this is... You know, when you reach for your sword, yeah. like, 
this could be the same thing where you going forwards, you're training those muscles. So he was looking at, you know, like the Yuna Akala military anyway. Yeah, yeah. And so he was linking that it has got militant root to it as well, just like the Huns. And and so then that got me interested in that. And then obviously the mostly it was with the Free HO and then also Swami Ramdev. Um, okay. You know, we, who's obviously internationally famous now. But when I went to him, there's a, like not even 100 people there. Yeah. And then I went through and learned as much as I can, free HO camps, traveling around, you always pick up something. So I'm not there teaching, I'm also watching and I'm learning. And then, then I pick up, picked up stuff. Yeah. And then that became really my career uh, after the police for, yeah, for a good good few years, just teaching yoga, traveling around to resorts. And it was uh, it's actually more tiring and less glamorous than it looks. It looks proper glamorous, huh? It's yeah. Awesome. yeah, Yeah, it looks really glamorous, but it's not. And then I saw you having to lift somebody on your back, and I was like, man, my back hurts watching you do that, <laughs> yeah. let alone you doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, like, you, you know, the thing is, when you're there and you know, okay, I've got to teach now in the morning, I've got to teach in the afternoon, Yeah. I've got to see a private client, because the people who stay in these places, they want to see you individually. Yeah. And so you're busy all day, then you've got meetings. Mm. So then literally, you know, sunbathing and... Stuff is like you are an hour here, hour there, just yeah. chill out, or you go for a swim, you go in the ocean. You don't get so much time when you're working. Because yeah, okay. you're being paid to be there, aren't you? Exactly. Yeah, you're not paid to go on holiday for it. Exactly, and then resting up, Hannah. Yeah. And then, yeah, so I did that, but I'm not going to do so much of that now. I'm kind of based here in Northampton. I'm going to try and, like, if I travel once a month maximum, and, yeah, just focus on really the... the Ayurvedic work and Ayurvedic seva, really. So with regard, I'm very ignorant to yoga because I've never practiced it, watched it. But is it different schools of yoga that you were learning, and you you applied a blend to it, or did you stick to a certain specific? Because, like I said, I am ignorant to it. I don't know what types there is. We know obviously from the um, from the shastras, York shastra, which is by Patanjali, mm. and Ramdev teaches basically from that. But I don't know really what the three H O teach. I don't know what, obviously, uh, Swami Raghunath or uh, uh, Swami Shankar, you know, what they were teaching. Did you apply a blend of their teachings or did you stick to a specific school? A really good question. I'd say, it has to, I'd say it's a blend, mm. but based on classical yoga. Okay. So I go more towards classical yoga like Swami Ramdev yep. than more of a syncretic version like yogi bhajan yeah um yeah using the traditional limbs you know yeah dana, pratya, and all, all yeah. These, you know but, dhyan, you know building these things up and i have set sequences and ways of doing that which i've learned from various babaji swamis and the rest of how we achieve mental stillness mental calmness yeah and so we can absorb nabani because by money seeing in in yeah. The Sangat go there and they say, You're my book, we read as much money as you do. Yeah. And you're shining like a golden light and mm. we've got nothing in yeah. us. What's the difference? And he says, Well, you know the Saki of Maharaj spitting out saying to people spit out the bung yeah. rather than swallowing it because you're spitting it out. And they say, well, All right, we get that. We know already know that. They've yeah. been quite cocky. We know that to analogy, him. Yeah. They've been quite cocky to him. They're like, We know already know that, but then how are you keeping it in and we can't keep it in? Yeah. And he goes, you have to focus the breath. You have to do hat. You know, yeah. hat karna yeah. you, have to do that. you have to have that determination. You have to have the mental concentration. And he actually advocates in Guru Sikhanga Bhagavad that they do yoga. Okay. That they do some breathing exercise. They do some yoga. He goes, you have to do yoga. And then you can connect with the Shabbat. And what we forget is that Guru Nana came where the Gaurakanath's cult was at its peak. Yeah, of course it was. Yeah, because all discussions are with Gaurak. Exactly. And the thing is, people forget that the common person in the bin knew yoga then. Yeah. They knew what it was. They knew what the breathing exercises were. And then with Shabbat, they could obviously emancipate themselves even higher. Yeah. You look at Bord, he had the same story, didn't he? Yeah. Yoga cult, and then he realized Shabbat there. Yeah. And the Madhya Makkah school. And Guru Nanak, that's why everything is the Shabbat. But if you can't connect to the Shabbat, how good is it going to do you? Yeah. You have to have an opening. So yoga is one school. Of yeah, the Dutchians. Shekhar, 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 the That's it. Yeah. That allows that. But obviously our Guru isn't the Yog. No. It's the Shabbat. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so it's a fine line. People don't understand. It's, a, it's just a tool. It's an implement, isn't it? Yeah. In the same way I had this conversation with somebody the other day about Vyakar. Yeah. And like, Gurbani is all Vyakar. I said, no, it's a tool. It's same as Vedanta. Yeah, yeah. Gurbani is above all these things. Yeah. But we apply different schools of thoughts, different tools. Exactly. And basically, our foresight isn't great enough to see the elephant in its hole. We'll go, now touching the tail and now touching the elephant. Yeah. Those are the different tools you're using at different times. Exactly. Yeah. And it's that simple. Yeah. So the thing is that, you know, yog and Aravida, they go together. And yeah. Bhakti, they're all interlinked. Yeah. The highest yog is Ikwankar. Yeah. You know, to merge in oneness. There's, there's no higher yog than that. Yeah. To realise, you know, Sada Anga Sangi, Apangan Bhagavate. The Waheguru is here, present right here, right now. Hajara Hajuru Savkala Prapur. The God isn't something you have to achieve. God is Tiya, Tade Antariya. That's the ultimate of yoga and merging your consciousness in with that presence of a Kaal yeah. which is everywhere. And then the the next thing is, well, if you're doing that, is that good enough? No, you've got a human life. You need to keep healthy. If your uh, your anger aren't working properly, had bear not working properly, what are you going to do for yourself or others? Exactly. So then out of here, the yoga comes into that. Just a system of health. We're not saying it's a certain form of bhakti. Yeah. You know, that, uh, that this is the, the, it's, the way. Well, it's, the, it's the way that everybody else will go, it's January, I need to get to the gym. Exactly. You know, it's, it's that sort of thing. It's, look, yeah. I don't do any of that shit, man. Look at me. Yeah. Like, you know, going to the gym, I go to the gym, get to a vending machine, buy something, walk out. Yeah. But yeah, everybody else is there to take some protection in your body, isn't it? Exactly. Right, so, you so you know the the body and mandarya. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to do our best to respect our city and yeah. someone else's. And the first thing, health is wealth. Yes. Like now, like the Dalai Lama says, people spend their whole life searching for wealth, and then the other half of their life getting rid of the diseases that were caused in the search of wealth. Yeah. So what's the point of that? Keep yourself. If you're healthy, sorry. Jere po go enjoy ho Yeah, exactly. Can I enjoy ho jinda? Like say your dad isn't feeling good, you feel sick. Well, you can't even eat anything. Hmm. Say if you can't move around, what can you really do? Yeah, exactly. Can you play with your kids? Can you go shopping for your parents? Can you do anything worthwhile? Yeah. So, you know, the thing is, we forget that Guru Nanak Dev was born in a culture where health was really important. Yeah. Even a few generations ago, health was really important. Now it's not, and that's why I embrace yoga, because I know it balances people. Get them back into body awareness. Yeah. That they're not like floating above their head somewhere in their thoughts all day and all long. And and I think sometimes people uh, are religious escapists. And I, I found that in the fun uh, that they sit in the god because they have got problems. They don't want to face their problems. They can't get over some issue, and they're sitting there in a sense of escapism. That's me. Yeah, that's true. It is true. It is true. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying it's you, but people no, no, do that. But, yeah. but the thing is, those mental, emotional problems. You know, after that, memory, memory, as you call it, for that you do go there, subject to that, you have to fix yourself. Yes. A man to do so, be upon a mood, be shan. If you, if everything's why guru, why guru, why guru, outward worship to the monotheistic Lord, yeah, exactly. which I'm saying there's a place for that too, because yeah. I believe it's panentheism. Yeah, that's it's, exactly that's what the key is. Yeah. It's panentheism. Well, yeah. I said this to Ramblings yeah. when I had a talk with him, and it's panentheism. I have to explain it, yeah. but it isn't. It's not pandeism. It's not. Yeah. Anything like that. Exactly. Is, yeah. That's going to be the nearest model. Yeah. Because monotheism will fit in there. Yeah. Polytheism will fit in there. Guru worship will fit in there. Fits, Us being part of God will fit in there. It fits, fits Shankaracharya's and Ramanuj's Vedant. Exactly. It's all inclusive, yeah. Anna. Yeah. And so the so we can look at Guru Granth Sahib as a set of theologies. Yes. Of Avasti and those different theologies come from the different Avasta we see. Yeah. And now the thing is, if we can't be in tune with our man, our self, mm. our deeper self. Because if we look in Garbani, what does Mara say in Garbani? Mara says, so first man to Jo Supe Apanamu Pishan, the Mara Atam Ras Jo Jani Sukhas, Jagad Jo Japan is passed. The list is endless. But you know, when you look at that really earnestly, instead of worshipping the monotheistic Lord, which is the place for, yeah. when you look at that from within, yeah. that's when your mind starts to change. Yeah. And your deficiencies start to get fixed. Yeah. But before that, those vagar can stay even in the worship of the Lord. 
Yeah. I've seen lots of dodgy stuff in the Gurdwara. I'm more of the dodgy person myself. Yeah. But I've seen lots of corruption, lots of things. Yeah. Uh, in, in in I can't say Dharam, but in religion. Yeah. Because where there's Dharam, there isn't wrong. Yeah, exactly. So, and so we know that there's a kind of Sikhi now a belief system mm. rather than a practice system of Dharam where people have a conscious awareness and mindfulness mm. from and having that Indic roots of where it comes from. Because if you cut a plant away from its soil, it dies. Yeah. And like I'm not saying like they'll say, Oh, you're saying India and Bharatama and Sanatan Dharam. I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying we come from the same land as those gods, goddesses, Buddha, yeah. Jains, this Sufi Fakis, Fariji. We come from that pluralistic background, that you mean of India as Pavitra. Yeah, exactly. There's so much bhakti done on it. And we cannot divorce ourselves from our culture from where we come from. Yeah. But if you cut Tarim from his culture, he can just seriously just go into fanaticism, go off into something else that it's not. But you've seen it now just because of hybrid versions in the West, uh-huh. where it's got no complex roots. And you see that with the, what I know you and me refer to as the neo sampradas Yeah, yeah. Where you're just like, you know, they're, they're, what they're saying is right, but they've got no roots. The, the roots don't exist. Exactly. No exactly. Tree with no roots goes down. Exactly. And the thing is, India is our roots. India exactly. is where we came from. And that doesn't make me Sanatanist. No. And, you know, Dharam is eternal. Yeah. But I don't mean it in a kind of a, in a, uh, in a Sanatan Dharam way. You can take it Omrath here. Yeah. And the fact, say to you, like the, the Ananda Purdavasi. Exactly. Pita Guru Govind Singh. Exactly. Them, that, it doesn't matter where you look, that you'll always, that will be your link. That's the link, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, the the thing is, I'm proud of being a British citizen, having a British passport. I'm proud that my forefathers, grandfathers fought for the British against the Nazis in Burma, against the Japanese, those type of things, and, you know, fighting in the World War One. I'm proud of that. So I'm always be a British citizen, yeah. but also my roots are Indian. And I'm not always honour that. So for me, I haven't got hatred of India. A lot of Sikhs got hatred of India because I'm not yeah, yeah. for this. And I understand. Yeah. I understand the angst, the pain. I went through that. But a part of the healing is we need to love our Punjab. Yeah. We need to love where we come from. And we need to stop throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, of course. We need to realise if we're so anti this and anti that. Sadatana, like Well, that's what all the sons say. They said, hey, dear, if a fly falls into the milk, you just don't throw all the milk away. Take the fly out. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. you do. It was, a, I think it was, um, uh, that's it, yeah. Anna? And he, and well, that's why I started. Handy, handy, yeah. and the, the from Baba Buddha's lineage. Is it on a Baba Hari Singh? Hari Singh, Baba Hari Singh. Hari Singh, Baba Hari Singh. Yeah. And Baba Hari Singh, they said to him, You can't say Krishna's name too much on yeah. the stage. And he said, My whole Katha is going to be on Krishna now. Yeah, because he said, he's called, <laughs> They said, Why do you call him Pagwan? He goes, Guru Rajan Deji calls him Pagwan twice. He's Guru Rajan Deji Wang. He goes, That's what he said, I'm going to talk about Krishna now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the thing is, the people, they don't understand that. All of these different ways are all streams leading to the same ocean. Yeah. But one thing is Sikhi is what the Guru removed from that. He's saying it's all a part of the Ik, it's yeah. all a part of the Konkar, but the Guru removed the idol worship. Exactly. And he removed the supremacy of the Ved. Oh, he removed the supremacy of the... The Guru removed the supremacy of the Vedas, 100%. Uh, they removed the and they said we are satantar, we are independent, not patantar, we are not dependent upon these. And the guru also said, with regards to the deities, the deities exist, but if we look at them in a semitic sort of version, they're they're the angels. Yeah. So why why worship them? Worship the, you know, don't focus on the kirtan, no, 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 no you know, That's it. focus That's on it. The, focus on kirtan. That's it. You know, so, the so it's a fine line, isn't it? Mm. And, you You've know, got to realize they are part of it, yeah. But don't worship them because exactly. they are not the. Focus. They've got their role as well, yeah. And and they're worthy of respect as well. Exactly. You know, dis- Sikhi is not the house of disrespecting everything. No. Sikhi is the house of honor and respect. Get out on that, Raji Javi. And so we need to be careful in these discussions, and we need to find the middle, Anna. Yeah. Ke, we're always going to be well, for at least for for Sikhs in Indian families, we're very close to the heritage. We're always going to be Indian. We're always going to be Punjabi. Yeah. Sek, Khalsa, etc. Or assigned to a certain Sampradha, Jatha, whatever it is. And that's all fine. Yeah. But we, we can't 
uh, forget that who, where, who our ancestors were, where we came from, what they did, how far the Guru has taken us, and what we owe that land. Yeah. You know, what we owe that land of Punjab uh, and the wider land, I would say. And, you know, Maharaja Ranji Singh didn't have this antagonism with, with the, the, the rest of India and, mm. and you know, like uh, uh, Shivaji, the Marathas and others. He was, right. We had good relations with everyone. So if that was the king of Punjab, why are we why are we in such conflict? And I, I understand that the Indian government instigated a lot of this themselves yeah. to create the separation, yeah, between people, the communal politics, which they always do. But do we need to fall for that? Because yeah. we look at Guru Nanak, Bhai Bala was a Hindu and Bhai Mardana was a Muslim. Yeah. Let's go back to the simple stuff, you know. We didn't the, need to convert them. They didn't they, bring them into another exactly. Part. I mean, he go um, uh, Baba Ji Guru Nanak goes with uh, Bhai Mardana. To Hajj, and yeah. in the Janam Saki says, You need to go to Hajj, mate, because you're a Muslim. Yeah. And he tells him, that You're my friend, you need to go. That's what it says in the Janam Saki. So you need to experience the truth and realize what is really there. Hanji. Yeah. And, and, then, and, then, and then the thing is, so we need to keep our doors open, our minds open, and yeah. hearts open. And my being the two people listening to this who live in the West, who from Sikhi background or yeah. whatever spiritual background is, do your bhakti, do your naam. But focus on what influence, what good good you're going to do, what CFI you're going to do. Because yeah. the world is increasingly selfish. Yeah. And Sikhi has always been about giving. And Langar, Bani and Seva. Yeah. And let's think what we can do for the wider communities yeah. and for the world at large in our own little ways, whether it's just planting a tree, whether it's just tiny, tiny little things. Whether it's a beautiful post on Instagram, whether it's just something with Shanti and peace, mm. and we need to embrace that. Like it's important for these times, especially like what the world's gone through in COVID now. Yeah. And I know a lot of up and up and there's so many deaths that happened in our community through mm. COVID. Um, but we need to like uh, think of the wider masses. Yeah. Like we've never been an insular, so we've never been like a, get- a ghetto. We've never had this idea of segregation. No, because Maharaj says, Narak Nam Chaldikra Terepone. Sarabata Dapa. Yeah. And we, we need the, to, even, yeah. even, J, J, Sardinal, Haram, we got there, you know, they're bad to us or whatever. Maharaj doesn't even exclude them. Sarabata yeah. Dapa. Yeah, so we need to keep that at the forefront. Yeah. No. Okay, how we, how we gonna be positive influences on the society that we yeah. live in. Yeah, uh, and how can we make the world a better place while we're all individually here? It's not a Jathadar's job. It's not the SGPC's job. It's not the job of any Shanami Karuri Jathadar or or anyone from any Sampradha. It's the individual's job as a Sikh yeah. to be in that Naam, do that Kamai, and be good to the wider society. Yeah. And until we don't all individually embrace that, we're going to be in the same internal politics. No, I can understand. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. We're going to implode, you know? We, we are, obviously, we don't want to explode either, but we need to grow. Yeah. But we don't need to get burdened by our own issues, like about Dasam Grant or about this issue, about we, that issue. Well, we said this the other week. I was yeah. having a talk with uh, Amparo and I was saying, we should focus on the 95% that we all have in common. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we're going to have 5% that's not common. Preach that to those people who uh, have got the same mindset to you. Yeah, don't start a fight with our own and cause issues of your own. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So you said about your yoga and keeping your mind still. Mm. Is that similar to mindfulness? What the practice within Buddhism? Well, look, I, I can't because that's focusing on the breath, isn't it? In in Asta Bakar Gita, you know, yeah, Asta yeah, Bakar yeah. was the guru of Radha Janak. Yeah, yeah, Radha yeah, Janak yeah. praised in Patanjali Sveyi yeah. by Pai Gardas Gurmukh Maya Vichadasi. Yeah. And so Raja Janak had that Raj Yog Padavi, yep. uh, you know, mentioned in a lot of the Pratan texts and the Sanskritic texts, Purani texts. So and Nana Prakash as well. Hanji, Hanji. Well, yeah. And on Asta Bakkar, he says that all enlightenment is, is the complete absorption into awareness. Okay. And so when we look at awareness, we, you know, we say Sat Chit Ananda, no? that yeah. all the from awareness come these three things, yeah? Truth, consciousness, mm. and bliss. But there's an underlying witnesser of all of that. Mm. So witnessing awareness. So yoga, when you're doing pranayam, breath, asana, 
really you're trying to focus more on your exp not your feelings about it, not what's happening when you're doing it, but yourself watching yourself do it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's the um, what, what do they call it? They call Asti Panti Prayer, don't they? they call it, and the, and the, the, the the experience, the seeker, the seeking, and the it's, it's the one thing, isn't it? That's it, that's the it. Triad, the triad. That's it. Like Ekagarta. Yeah, na? that's it, yeah. Like Ekmanik Chit. Yeah, that's it. In, in Gurbani. Yeah. So when you're doing that, there's not an object-subject relationship. No. You're becoming one. One with, with the whole thing. With the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. And so that becomes witnessing awareness, pure awareness, yeah. pure consciousness, pure seeing, yeah. pure knowing. And that's really, that is the Nirgun form of a Kalpur. Yeah. The rest is all Sargun and, and all the astral, that's all yeah, Sargun, that's all. Devi, Dev, Dev. That's all Sargun, all everything with a transcendent form. Yeah, yeah all the mandalas. Mm. That's all, it's not Maya no. on that level, but then it, it plays down into Maya. Yeah. And then there's that central focus or, or, or point where it's all coming from, the Bindu mm. or the heart center, whatever you want to call it, or the Paramatma, but the mystery. Yeah. And that really is when you start that self-reflective process, you will see your own patterns, your obsessions, your good, bad, your bagar, everything. It doesn't mean you become perfect. No. But what you do is you start seeing how they play out. Yeah. Yeah. And some self awareness. And that mindfulness, a yoga ends in mindfulness. And that's where Bord, yeah. he puts it first mindfulness. And then the Guru went further and said, you need Shabbat Yeah, Shabbat Surta Mark. Huh. Yeah. So yeah, the Guru said, actually, it's not just about Sorti. Yeah, exactly. You have to have Shabbat it with Shabbat. Yeah. So the Guru further refined what Bord had done, what the yogis had done. What people think is, Oh, the Guru criticizes it, so he just writes it off. No. The Guru doesn't the, write it off. The Guru explains <laughs> you use the Shabbat yeah. to um, melt the ends of the Kundalini from there and yeah. hold the Kundalini. Yeah. Then you go through the astral, astral exactly. centers. So it's all mentioned yeah. with the Shabbat Sultan. And look at Bhagat Jayadev Shabbat of yeah. the, of the, the Anadon Valor yeah. and, yeah. you know, saying the name of God 16 times. Yeah. So it's, is it Bhagat Jayadev? I thought it was Bernie. I don't know. It's one of the books. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's one of the books. Yeah, it's but it's like bugs, huh? you hold the Ira Pingo Sukhumana and I you go, mean. yeah. And Guru Nanak even mentions it yeah. to balance then, you know, get yeah. the energy in the Sushona. So these things, they're real. Yeah. It's how we apply them, what we're going to do with them. Yeah. And so... Nice. I've got six different questions for you based on what you've said. Um, first question. You mentioned your dad's background in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever looked back into it or researched it or documented it in any manner? No, there was an yeah. Afghan Singh who came here for a treatment. Yeah. And he said, Singh, I'm telling you, you know from your luchin in your family, yeah. how you talk to each other, do stuff. You're Afghan Sikhs. Well, um, I can tell that, but yeah. I remember saying that to somebody at uni, just your complexion, your, yeah. your features, your eye colour, and yeah. I was just like... And I said, you're off your rocker. I said, you know, we're, we're uh, Punjabi, we're this, that, and the other. We're from uh, Garpadana yeah. in, in Namashir. And he's like, no, I'm telling you. And then I said to Dad, and that obviously Dad's, you know, he's, he's ageing a little Kept bit. Kept it to himself. No, no, I said to Dad, I go, this the guy said this, that we're from Afghan, and he said, no, no, I can't. No, it's not possible. No, and then two weeks later, he goes. Actually, I remember my great 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 granddad came from Afghanistan, yeah. and he had two wives, and then they were they were in two different oh. bends or split into two yeah. different places. And our side of the family come from one, and so then that was the Afghan connection that made a lot of sense. No, and fine. I haven't researched it more. No, that's fine. I think. Uh, I think it's something you need to do. It's something kids will probably want to know. At some yeah, point. yeah, and yeah. So that that's kind of. I will go to Afghanistan one day. I hope when it's safe. I know one of the very, very prania uh, sarups of uh, Dasam Gransal and Guru Gransal were out there. I don't know what happened to those two sarups. They were out there. But, um, it's surprising. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about the sarups. Uh, no, it's, um, it could have been there. I know. Yes, the one where he left when. Yeah. Ripped the tents. And then there was the other one where Baba Sri Chanji's got to go over there as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned your forefathers in World War One. World yeah. War, yeah, I, I mean, do you know a lot about them or historically I, your background? What I know is that Dad's father was decorated twice with medals yeah. and he fought in Burma. Yeah. And then his father and his brothers, they were, they were out in yeah. France somewhere. 
and uh, yeah. Because Amadeus um, Mother has just released a website, hasn't he, with lots of lots of different names. Yeah. It doesn't capture everybody, but it captures a lot of names. Yeah, now I'm going to have to look through that, check it out. Well, wow, that's good. Uh, the other thing, you've not really touched upon it, but we've seen it here. You've got pictures and pictures and pictures of manuscripts, which are not... I know you've said talked about your research within the libraries, but a lot of those are... Because you also have your Bobo colorized frescoes, your all sorts. How long have you been collecting? You know, obviously you've put some massive research in, which isn't even in any of your books. You've got stuff that's sat there in the ether. Yeah, it's just all sitting there. I'm going to put it all online with your help. Oh, well, putting it online, yeah. you know, that's not an issue. But what I'd like to know was how long did it take for you to gather all, all that information and You've been sat upon it, so you. I'm guessing that's during your time in India. In that. India and here, I think it's a good ninety-five, ninety-six. It's a good twenty years worth of, of researching, photocopying, collecting. Yeah, you got lots there. It'd be like I said, that'd be inter- We'll be happy to help you with anything on that. That's not a problem. Um, you, I, I don't really want to go through a lot more else. What I want to go through is a couple of things I remember about you. I remember meeting you through your cousin Hodge. Mm-hmm. Hodge was at college with us. Yeah, he's a major now. My oh, Hodge. I, mean. I just remember this this person out of nowhere, me and my cousin at college, because he used to do the college course while he was at Leicester Uni, come and slap us on the back and we're like, who the hell is this? One, well, he's massive. Uh, he introduces obviously to yourself. Um, what, some, one of my earliest things of remembering you was Leicester Uni talk on 1984, you brought a VHS tape with all the clips on. I'd never seen anything like that at that time. And then I remember thinking, I need some guidance, I need some help. And I remember saying to you, said, see, said, uh, since I've taken my room, it's like made me thick. I can't remember anything. And I remember you saying to me, it's like, it doesn't do that. It's not your armor doing that. I remember you saying, but your armor makes you focus away from worldly things. That's the first time it hit me. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, from now on, when somebody's talking about grants or something to do with or something to do with I can retain that. But if somebody's telling me, well, I can get to the periodic table of hydrogen here and listen to it on board now, I don't want to know. That's it, that's it. I just remember you saying that to me. It was the first time, because I was thinking to myself, something wrong with me. Mm-hmm. Take a moment and I can't retain any of this. Um, so those are my first two things. And like I said, you taught me the first things about Dasam. By releasing Skid than I heard in your room at uni first time. Mm-hmm. Sarabla, we were talking about that. Yeah, I remember you telling me about Sarabla when you came back from India after you'd spent time with the Dalbanth when Baba Santa Singh came back to the Dwar side. Yeah. You were there. I was there, yeah. I know you were there because <laughs> I remember you saying, when I was next to this thing, he's about seven foot something tall. He's massive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. remember you sitting there telling us about that. Yeah, yeah. And if it wasn't for those sorts of things, those sorts of conversations at the time, and not, you introduced me to John, who I spent so much time with after that. Yeah. He's seen them well. It was, you know, for me, it's it's been a, a great, great time. Knowing if it wasn't for you in my life, I wouldn't be where I was. Without a doubt. Likewise, likewise, say, likewise. Say, likewise. So now I'm more than thankful for that. I remember you and your cousin bringing pizza, like, for the students like me who live out. So <laughs> there's a lot of good you did us too. When I was, we got our links with Sardars and places yeah. like that, didn't we? We got free. Yeah, and Mahapur Kani Sangha, that, you, know, you were, you know, the, you really put a lot of effort into that. Awesome. And, and, you know, being sort of on the Pagdi, the Marag of that, and having those discussions with you in the library, especially yeah. we'd sit there and have a chat. And we didn't really go to SU, did we? We didn't go No, to no, it wasn't that. We were Kimberlin Library. Yeah, sat we in were, Kimberlin Library upstairs. Yeah, upstairs, yeah. And then and then I remember like, yeah, many, many hours sitting there with you and then looking at stuff on the on the oh, internet. Yeah. And what the we while we went through the yeah. stuff. I remember sitting there in your room and you were doing the th- Jordy you sit Jordy. So you were playing the Tabla. Dear Singh Nirvan I was uh, playing the shovel on the Dilava and it was a Kanya Tiki Valuniki. I just remember sitting there, it was the three of us. Yeah, yeah. And there's moments like that that, you know, 20, 24 years on yeah. are still in my head and they're pivotal moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me and too. Pivotal moments for me. For uh, me too. Because it was like, I'm learning from these people who, you know, yeah. my, my bit of Siki is my keep your kiss. It was the um, goodness gracious me, man, bug, bug, man, that's it, you're a sick, and that was. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was learning at the time, so for me, I'm thankful. Just before we finish, you've mentioned some future projects and, yeah. that you're working on. You've mentioned colonialism, and the uh, Emily Eden, and, and your uh, other books on the Dasson and uh, things like that. When are they? Is a is a is it just to be announced, or is it? Have you got dates and I've prospects got, and I've things? I've got like? a timeline. Yeah, I've got. I've got like uh, big family now, yeah. children, mum, dad. So I've got responsibilities, and I want yeah. you know youth gives you a lot of vigor. Of course it does. And so when I was younger, I'm happy that I started a lot of this stuff. But you know, as you get to my age, middle age, it gets a bit harder to be. It's not that I'd love to do it, yeah. But just the other priorities, the responsibilities and priorities, Anna. Yeah. But I think you know, I think this year. Maybe a couple of things will be published. Can you give us a synopsis on each one? Or maybe just you know a couple of power. Okay, yeah, no, if you can. no problem. So the the book on colonialism yeah. is looking at essentially the incremental reform the the British did. Yeah, and how they achieved that. How they did it through intelligence gathering, yeah. what kind of things they did, why they wanted to do it, yeah. looking at things like seditious literature. Like, no one has looked at the Dasam Grant in that way, yeah. even I didn't. But the thing is, if you look at it, they they knew it was too pivotal in the bunt, yeah. but for them it was seditious literature. So they couldn't call it that because yeah. it would be like blasphemy. Mm. So they had to kind of sideline it in other ways. Yeah. And I look at, you know, Shastar Puja, Ardi Arda, all the things that they did incrementally to change all that. Yeah. That anything that has kind of Bidas or warrior kind of uplifting kind of spirit. Yeah. And the passive things that they left, obviously, that we have passive things too, Hannah. And so I look at these, these kind of things and, and you know, I, I look at things like uh, the Prakash of Shastar, mm. the city of Karl Fluxab and the Reformation, what they were saying about these type of things and you know, that they needed to be done away with and all this type of stuff. Mm. So, you know, we know that the Mariada was more like a Jul Saab, such kind of Jul Saab, Patana Saab, even Patana Saab, a little bit of Patana Saab. But the Sikhi in, in Punjab was reformed. So if you look at Aarti in any Hindu mandir, in any Adasi, you know, Akara, no, same, it's still normal, the Punjabi kind yeah, of goes on and things like that. That's it, they stand up and do it. Yeah. And then even Santh now, yeah. they'll sit down and do it. You can't do Aarti sitting down. It's, mm. it's Mariada standing up. Yeah. So the Nahang Singhs do it standing up. Yeah. And at yeah. Darbar Saab, they used to do it standing up. Mm. And they would have all the Suwaye Kabit from Dasam Grant. Mm. They've all been taken off. And Jakarta has been stopped. And all these kind of things. So I look at all of that. Okay. And how it's related to the martial tradition, the Kshatri tradition uh, of the Pant. And, mm. uh, and you know how Guru Gobind Singh made it armed. And so that's uh, that's, that, that's that's those two. The Emily Edens is never heard of Emily Edens. She kind of travelled into the Punjab. And she she drew a, a lot of kind of like uh, like watercolors. I think they were okay. of like Nahangs and you know Maharaja Ranjit Singh, Shia Singh, and she she had a book uh, of travels. Okay. And what I do is expand on some of the things she's written, explain it a little bit, explain a bit about her and her life. Along with those images, uh, scanned at a very, very high quality and then touched up digitally. Okay. So using all the latest technology to make that better, because you know some of the some of the images out there are really bad, and so I kind of put that out there that scholars or people who publish books will use my book to do that, mm -hmm. and plus the information I put there. Okay. And a lot of interesting and anecdotal information in those books. And then going on to working on some um, kind of translation work with Brim Smarter Grant, uh, a bridge with Guru Mukhi. Yeah. There's one excise chapter on diet which was taken out, putting that back in. Okay. And then working on Gavi uh, Kankan Daskur Katha. Mm -hmm translation and with uh, sort of illustrated with images of each guru as they come from frescoes and and you know photographs I've got that now have been whitewashed yeah, yeah. Them in the book and then work on Sarvlo Grant I've written about 100 pages on the history contents about the meaning of it uh, with translation and they're the major projects there's lots of other 
small essays and smaller things, but yeah, I'm in no rush. I mean, there's and then there's my obviously my PhD and edit this and publish this. You um, might not be in a rush, but we yeah, are. Yeah, to see it. Yeah, no, but I can't. <laughs> I know, I can't. no, but I'm, yeah. that's what I mean. So yeah. people who will be watching this, listening to this, they'll be, you know, eagerly waiting those sorts of things because what it's doing is bringing out more research for other people to then work their stuff off as well. I know this sounds like a cop out, but my advice to you and Sangat Guru Khalsa Sex Sangat is let the school that I can complete it. Yeah. Let the situation happen so that I can be a CEO and do it. That's what I live and breathe for. Yeah. And I wish I had more time and, no. and space to be a be, be a Sivada for the month and, and do what I can for the future generations yeah. in a, in a in a positive way. Uh, the other one you mentioned earlier on was a course online with regards to the Ayurvedic stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you're obviously working upon that. Um, you know that that's another thing that I'll be very interested to see when when that comes out. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've mentioned the uh, and you've mentioned a number of times the Ayurvedic uh, detoxing. There are going to be many individuals out there that are going to be interested in looking at this rather than going through pharmaceuticals, through doctors, through treatments that they've gone through there and not worked. Um, with regards to contacting you and therapies, um, do you have um, contacts that we can share on here? Yeah, it's just my website, World Wide Web, yeah. goonwood.com. Okay. And then all the information is there. A lot of the different treatments are there explained in, in, in detail. Yeah. And then, you know, how it's arranged, the costs and everything else. And then there's a form that they can fill in. Okay. And it's got my WhatsApp phone number and uh, my Instagram's connected to it, I hope. Okay. And, uh, yeah, you can find me on Facebook. And just, you know, I'm always... What are your handles on social media? Is it Gummer Singh? It's just Gummer Singh, Singh, yeah. That's right. So, yeah, we'll add that on anyway at the bottom. Um, for me, like I said, I just want to thank you. I, I know we've taken up a lot of your time. You've got people who need your help while we've messed you around. And Coiny, Coiny, Coiny. Is there anything you want to add for anybody who's listening? Or any, any... Whatever you do in your life, mm. no one's life is going to be perfect. Yeah. Give it your best shot. You have to answer to yourself yeah. and your guru, your consciousness, your higher consciousness within you. Guru Tade Nali, Yana. Yeah. Sadhguru Le Kunda, De Kunda. What Sadhguru Andar, Yana. Yeah. But I say, above and beyond all of that, live from a place of love. Yeah. And live from a place of peace. And that's what I'm trying to strive for and learn myself in my life. Yeah. That I can maintain and do that in an unbroken stream. And yes, we can do all the rituals and all the things we want and part and nithanim and purifications and ashanam. Bihar Karo, dedicate all you're doing to the Guru, Guru Angasangya. Yeah. And the Khalsa Panth has got nothing to worry about. We just had this Andola and with the government. We won it. Yeah, we helped other minorities. Uh, we helped other groups, the Hindus and Muslim, also get their rights. We were f- at the forefront. I'm really glad that the Nahang Singhs came to the forefront. Yeah, they did. Massively. And my being the is to everybody in the Pants, no matter whether whatever group they're from is Shanti Nadel. I haven't been the best example of that. Yeah. I have to say, but my I never had physical conflict. It was always debate, you know? yeah. So I had a lot of friction in debate. But I it never really got to anything nasty. Yeah. But I say Piyar Nal Vichar Kuru, we all gonna have different opinions. But we all, our father is the same Guru Gobin Singh Maharaj. Mm-hmm. Martha Sahab Guru is our mother, yeah. Guru Granth Sahib is our guru. We all share the same gurus. Yeah. And let's have unity, not from a political sense, but yeah. a unity of Piyar yeah. and respect. Politically, we can never align, Anna. No, no, we because because where people's beliefs are different, alignment on the need on the right naturally. God, any alignment on the let alone elsewhere, Anna. Yeah. In our own house, we can't find that unity sometimes. Yeah. So the thing is, pretend that's a false political unity. That's what the secret Edmari other. Unfortunately, it tries to put everyone into in the same, same box, place yeah. and then yeah, kills everyone like... off, right? And the thing is, so 
life is never going to be like that. Yeah. Let's accept we all have different practices, but we all maras this heck, yeah. So I a car or a made all of us. Yeah. And let's live with peace and fear the most we can. Yeah. And let's in our community at least, let's try and keep our laundry in our own cupboard. Yeah. And deal with things internally yeah. as much as we can amongst ourselves. Because that's why Maharaj made the Akal Taksa. So. Yeah. Because he's saying your your justice is your own. Mm. He gave us that. So let's f- sort out our problems between ourselves. Yeah. Kindly. In an honourable way. I say that to the Najavan. Have humility, loyalty and respect for another Guru Naga Sekhya Pame. You know, someone's got their hair cut. It doesn't mean they're less of a sec. No, it doesn't. Right? Have respect for every sec of Guru Nanak mm. in my being the, to the to my brothers and sisters. And the other thing is just back to the same thing. Here to see name karna, nit name karna, part karna, apna rera saab karna, tiyata karna, jo even dekra karni, chatka karna, jo karna, right? Whatever, kitan karna, renswa karna. Don't do it from hunger, do it from pyar. Yeah. That's my only beti. It's a good message, my friend. Right. I just want to say thank you on behalf of the flawed, foolish, and fantastic podcast. Yeah, thank you, thank you for being the fantastic. Thank you for being fantastic. Flawed, flawed. No, no, I'll, 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 I'll bang. <laughs> but what I want, what I want is, like I said, society to know that you're out here, you're doing this, and what you have done for us. And uh, I'm, I'm personally thankful. So I'm saying we just want to say thank you very much for being a, a guest well, and taking your time out. Thank you for yeah. coming to my yeah. house and, and uh, honouring me. Well, not honouring it. You got to sweep up afterwards, huh? <laughs> causing a mess. But thank you very much for saying why would you call us? Why would you keep up?